okay. Can I ask again what you saw? Yeah. You know, the reason why I probably haven't come out yet, because it's like so cringe. Um, hey, kids, you ever hear about Dak Prescott? He can't win the big one. Yeah. Hey, this is a brown ball. You throw it real far, and then when you play it and you get hit on the head, you see little Tweety Birds, but you'll be fine. I like that. Good Our answer. producer forgot to press the button on Wednesday when the podcast just didn't go out. Put hands and feet. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. On today's part of my take, we have an incredible show for the people. We have two guests. Clinton Portis, one of the best running backs we've watched in our lifetime, talking Miami Hurricanes 2001, talking his career, uh, running the football. Then we have Tiffany Gomez. Uh, you might remember her from being a meme going viral online for a moment on an airplane, which we get to the bottom of. Great interview with her as well. We're going to do week nine picks and preview. So much to get to. Firefest should be can't miss. Uh, and is all brought to you by our friends at Proper 12. Rich and smooth, Proper Number 12 Irish Whiskey. New smooth to the core, Proper Number 12 Irish Apple. New crisp and fresh, Proper Number 12 Irish Apple. Founded by Conor McGregor for every bottle sold. A donation is made to support our brave first responders. Shoot your shot of Proper Number 12 Irish Whiskey. Pour the roar. Order your bottle of Proper Number 12 Irish Whiskey from Drizzly today. I've been drinking proper number 12 all college football season in Madison last weekend. I accidentally broke the shot glass, so I had to go straight from the bottle. Nice swig, and it went down so smooth. It was the Irish apple. It was a proper number 12 Irish apple. It is the best football weather whiskey out there. It is whiskey season. Whiskey season is here. Proper number 12 is the best whiskey out there. So check out the new smooth to the core proper number 12 Irish apple Pour the roar. Order your bottle of proper number 12 Irish whiskey from Drizzly today. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Friday, November 3rd, and the Texas Rangers are World Series champions. I thought we had to start with that because we were obviously on an off day when the Rangers won the World Series on Wednesday night. We des- The Rangers fans deserve this. Mm-hmm. You are world champions. Incredible run. Yeah. Never lost a road game. They, they were awesome on the road. Congratulations to Rangers fans. First World Series in the history of your franchise. 63, Big moment. Year, 63 years. Big moment. Congrats to all the great ones. Congrats to uh, Nolan Ryan. They were celebrating on top of his statue after mm-hmm. the game. Uh, Adrian Beltre. Congrats to Rafi Palmero. Mm-hmm. All the great Rangers that we've seen. Uh, Rough Ned Odor. Yep. All the great ones. Yes. Uh, and c- congrats to Will Smith. Yes. Who is a three-time World Series champion. First player to ever win three consecutive World Series on three different teams. I think his salary this year was $1.5 million. Best investment of all time. Go, go! Every, every team should try to go sign him. He won with the Braves. He won with the Astros. He wins with the Rangers three years in a row. It's insane. Bruce Bochy, already a Hall of Famer, cements it even more. Four World Series championships. Uh, they showed the stat yesterday since he came back the first time. So, obviously, it was the Padres' uh when he was managing against the Yankees in the World Series in 98, I believe. When he came back uh, with the Giants, 14 out of the last 15 postseasons, actually 15 out of the last 16 postseason uh, series he's won. That's insane. It is pretty incredible. Yeah. Biggest head in baseball. Biggest head in baseball. Eight and a quarter quarter size. I don't know what that translates. I think it's 25 inches. Yeah. So it's like a small child's waist. And they never lost on the road. Never lost on the road. Which is crazy. Um, Sorry to Diamondbacks fans out there. You guys had a good run. Dan Heron. I I did like that they, um, they put security guards around the pool. After the game was over to make sure that the Rangers couldn't, you don't dip in another team's pool yep. to celebrate. That was smart. That would have been a bad visual for D backs fans that you'd have to live with for a while. And also, massive congratulations to the New York Mets. Yes. Because Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer won a World Series. Congrats yep. to they the Mets out there. Do it. They were going to do it. And they did it. And all the Mets fans said, like, well, you know, at least DeGrom's just going to take a paycheck somewhere and ride off into the sunset, thinking that he wouldn't be competing for a World Series ring. Mm, well, Jake DeGrom. 
World Series champion. World Series champion. Yeah, the Rangers, uh, incredible run. I mean, not not losing on the road is just insane. I, I like that's that's such an accomplishment. And uh, I I know that people will say, oh, the ratings were so low. Who the fuck cares? Mm-hmm. No one. No one cares. I don't care. I do not care that the ratings were low. Uh, Rangers fans deserve this. I saw a couple of videos of them like going crazy in uh, the Dallas Fort Worth area. It was awesome. I have one last thing about uh, baseball, then we'll talk quickly about Thursday night football. Little trivia for you, courtesy of our friend Marlins Man. You ready for this? Okay, yeah. Okay. Marlins Man posted this last night after the Rangers had won. He said, who is the last team to celebrate winning the World Series in their home stadium as the home team? Quick, who? Answer will surprise you. Quick, who? Answer will surprise you. Is it the Kansas City Royals? Red Sox. It was the Houston Astros last year. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Wild trivia. That is crazy. <laughs> it did that, answer surprise. That did surprise. That's that's like it's not, Red Sox was 2013. Literally, that wasn't that long literally ago. Literally every reply was like, dude, last year? That is the okie doke. <laughs> That's a great I, trivia question. I think he forgot that last He definitely year. did because you don't ask that question if the answer. I guess the answer did surprise me, though. It did surprise you. Max, did it surprise you? I don't, I don't care. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we also had Thursday Night Football. Uh, I have two takeaways from this game. One is Will Levis is good. Yeah. Will Levis is good. He's the guy. That was a game that you thought short rest, going to Pittsburgh, tough defense, tough pass rush. I did not think that he would have uh, the game that he had. He was in that game all the way to the end. Obviously, an interception at the end, but you know, you're, there's 11 seconds left. You got to force it. Uh, he his spiral is beautiful. You know what? It's effortless. The ball his looks wrist. different. Yeah. coming out of his hand. Yeah, it he looks stands different. in the pocket. Mm-hmm. He really does. So that was my first one, and my second one was I kind of love the Pittsburgh Steelers in the fact that they play the ugliest games. But they're a lot of fun yeah. because they're always close and it feels like they're always dramatic because this is the the Pittsburgh Steeler way. Hang around, hang around, hang around. Kenny Pickett, fourth quarter drive, uh, and then win with like you know their entire defense teeing off on a quarterback. Yeah, big difference today I thought was Matt Canada being on the sidelines. Yeah. It's a, he's a different play caller on the sidelines. Yes. They, they were getting – they were running some plays besides the, uh, the Najee up the middle and then like a tight end screen for negative one yards. They were mixing around a little bit. They didn't really go downfield that much. Um, George Pickens had a touchdown where he he should have gotten his other foot down. Yep. That was one of the – I think he was like three or four yards inbounds when his first foot hit, and then he didn't drag the second foot, stepped out of bounds. Uh, Deontay Johnson got his Shout first touchdown. Shout out our guy Deontay. Since 2021. The last guy who threw him a touchdown was Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, it had been – it had become – it was a joke between us here because Jersey Jerry, our friend who's a Steelers fan, had been telling us to bet Deontay Johnson touchdown for what felt like five years. Never scored. But it also had become like a pretty big story because Al Michaels mentioned it multiple times. Yeah. And like to go to be a receiver like him who has 20 plus touchdowns, I think, in his career to go uh, like a season and a half without a touchdown. I'm happy for. Him. Yeah. And also I'm happy for Al Michaels. Al Michaels had a pretty good night. Yeah, tonight. he was a little juiced up. I think I think somebody got in his ear and was like, "Hey, Al, take this eight ball of cocaine before you go on the air tonight." He's and it was, Pittsburgh. It, it got was him wonderful. going. It was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So it was a good game. Uh, other thing before we get to our picks and preview, uh, Bob Knight passed away. Yeah, uh, I I I did like how, how all the obituaries tried to dance around the fact that Bob Knight was a little bit of an asshole. They were like controversial or you know like checkered past mercurial. Bob Knight was a legend in the sports world. If you if you grew up in the 80s, 90s, uh, even, you know, in the early 2000s, Bob Knight was a bigger than, you know, it felt like he was bigger than the sport at times. Um, and he was a character. He was a character through and through. Yeah, the thing you can say about Bob Knight is people, there's somebody in the world right now that is getting into a fight with somebody else about Bob Knight's legacy. Yes. And that's what Bob Knight probably would have wanted. That's how I want to be remembered. I want somebody to fight somebody else because of my legacy at he, some point. He also it felt like Bob Knight was a guy who just lived to the extremes in every way. Like you could you read stories about Bob Knight being like, you know, his players loving him and, you know, like helping out other coaches and and giving back to the community. And then you read stories about him being like a tremendous asshole. He just lived at the extremes at all times. And those people are interesting. Yeah. Those people make the world like a, a funner place to cover sports and to to watch sports and to see these type of characters. So 
Uh, yeah, that like I I just I, I, whenever someone dies, like you don't have to shit on them right away. No, you can let it se- settle for a you minute. Can, you can at the very least just let them know that you have a check that hasn't been cashed. Correct with their name on it. Yes. That's the proper way to remember somebody. Is like that guy that just died. I actually own a piece of his memorabilia. Yes. And it's yes. not really a piece of memorabilia. It's a check that he wrote that was never cashed. Yes. That's another great way to be remembered. Also, Bob Knight, he when he gave that speech at Indiana, said, bury me upside down so my critics can kiss my ass. What a great moment that what was. What a great huh? moment. He also was the first to call MJ. There's a lot of stories about Bob Knight being like MJ is the best player he's ever seen when he coached uh, the Olympic team in 1984. The famous story goes that the Portland Trailblazers with the second pick called Bob Knight and asked him, and they were like, we need a center. He's like, so then play Michael Jordan at center. Mm-hmm. And so, he, yeah, he, he's, he's touched all, like, eras of basketball. The craziest Bob Knight stat is he has the last perfect season, which is nuts, 1976, I believe, three national titles, you know, many Final Fours, all these Big Ten championships. Bob Knight had one NBA All-Star. Isaiah really? Thomas. That's crazy. It's nuts. That's Bob Knight. He had a system. Uh, Titus, who we'll have on to maybe do some college basketball preview, said that his dad always used to say, because he obviously grew up in Indiana, huge basketball fan. His dad used to always say that Bob Knight can take a bad basketball player and make him good and a great basketball player and make him good. Consistency. Yeah. I love to hear yeah, that. Yeah, that's he's also, the Bob Knight way. He's the only coach that was smart enough to realize, well, they have that's Michael Jordan right there. The only person on earth good enough to lock down Michael Jordan is Dan Dockage. Yes, yes. So Bob Knight, I mean, he is, he does, those type of characters make uh, sports more interesting they for ma- guys like us. They make them fun. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't always the funnest guy to play for if you were one of his players. Yeah. Maybe you loved him, maybe you hated him. But again, people right now are getting into a fight because someone's like, Bob Knight was the greatest. And some guy's like, no, Bob Knight was an asshole. It, and then they fight about yeah, it. Yeah. It's great. Bob Knight did. He he knew he was an asshole because he said uh, many times that he wants his players to hate him because it gives them something in common. They're united. Yeah. And the one thing they're united. It's a great way is, to bring a team chemistry coach. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, all right. Let's let's get to our picks and preview. We got a big, big week. Uh, nine. I keep saying week 10. I don't want to say week 10. Week nine. So let's do that. Okay, time for our picks and preview of week nine in the NFL. It's brought to you by our friends at Uber Eats. It's football season, and you can get almost, almost anything you need for game day delivered with Uber Eats. What do we mean by almost? Well, you can get a win in game seven for Max's team's delivered. No, you cannot, but you can get wings delivered. A strong defense, that's a no, but strong deodorant, that's a yes. Pet supplies for Blake and Stella, that's a yes. A six-pack of abs for Hank? Definitely no. That's never happening. But a six-pack of beer for Hank? Yeah, you can get that. Uber Eats can get you that. There you have it. Get almost, almost anything for game day delivered with Uber Eats, official on-demand delivery partner of the NFL. Alcohol in select markets and 21 plus to order. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. Get almost, almost anything with Uber Eats. I got a Halloween costume. You got a Halloween costume? Yeah. I, on Uber Eats? On Uber Eats. Swear to God. Look at that. I ordered a, a cowboy hat on uh, a, a different platform, and a picture of a cowboy hat showed up at my doorstep. <laughs> so right before the party, I was like, what am I going to do? Uber Eats. Looked at Uber Eats. They had, they had cowboy hats. It's delivered it with Uber awesome. Eats. Almost, almost anything. That's a great plug right there. So go check out Uber Eats right now. Get almost, almost anything. Order now on Uber Eats. Okay, boys. Week nine of the NFL, which means when we get to the end of the one o'clock games, we'll be officially at the halfway point of the season. I hate that. Okay. Hate but that. now we get football. Football, the real football is about to be played. You know, I'm going to call this Separation Sunday. Ooh, I like it. I like that. I just like saying it. And it looks like with these matchups, it might be real because we've got a lot of good matchups and then we've got a lot of really shitty matchups. But the nice thing is the good matchups, you get one in every block. Yes. So there's good games going on at any given time. And then you've got a lot of guys and you're like, oh, wait. These two guys are playing quarterback. Mm-hmm. So um, the good teams are going to play each other, and we're going to find out who's for real. I like it. It's, it might be Fraud Watch Sunday, too. Yep. We're going to find out who is for real. So let's start it with the game in Germany, Dolphins at Chiefs. Now, I spent essentially the last three weeks in my head being like, I cannot wait to bet the Chiefs. I thought 
When they lost to the Broncos, even better. Now you get the Chiefs under a field goal. Patrick Mahomes under a field goal, incredible. But the travel. The travel is an issue. Uh, the Chiefs are getting into Germany like right now. They're practicing one time. They're That's practicing crazy. on Friday one time. McDaniel got the guys in there on like Monday or Tuesday. Monday morning. I think he, he left Sunday night. He built in a fun day for them. He's like, you know what? I want you to go out and experience Germany, see what it has to offer, go sightseeing, form relationships with your teammates. They're, they've got fuck around time in Germany, and that doesn't always end well. But for these guys, I feel like it's going to be a good thing where they get practices, they get a day off, they get to hang out. And uh, it's also Mahomes' first time ever going to Europe. Ooh. He's never been to Europe before. Does he have his passport? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if they did passport day. But he's excited to go over there and play and have some fun out there per Patrick Mahomes. Oh. But he's also coming off the flu. He is coming off the flu. Nothing worse than having to get on a long flight after the flu. I Yeah, like this game, I, I would love to bet the Chiefs, but the travel is so far in my head, and we've seen it. We've actually been probably the preeminent travel podcast when it comes to tracking these things. Mm -hmm. What do we have? The Titans were sleepwalking. Yep. Uh, the Bills, I believe. It was a combination of the Titans sleepwalking and the Ravens pass game over yeah. in uh, in London where they got blown out by like 40 points, and then... Harbaugh even said, like, I'm I'm not doing that again. And and the Bills, I believe, also went late and they they slept walk yep. against the Jaguars. So yeah, this is you have to bet the Titans. Gotta bet get, you gotta, or, sorry, bet the Dolphins. We're you betting the Dolphins. We're betting on the clock. We're betting on That's the clock. That's what we're doing. And I the only counterpoint is what time is it in Honolulu mm. when this game kicks off for Tua? I have a really, really stupid Tua stat that means absolutely nothing, but sounds really cool. Okay. That's basically this show. Yeah. Tua. Is twelve and one Damn it. quarterback. That's my nugget. I was oh, so excited. Please don't yell like that. God, uh, that was scared Sorry, the realize, fuck out of me. Yeah. I didn't realize how hot I was. Okay. Uh, <laughs> two is twelve and one against quarterback, or sorry, against coaches that have won a Super Bowl. That's pretty good, but it's not that cool because he's beaten Bill Belichick six, six times. Six of those times. Yeah. yeah. So it's so like Belichick. I went and looked at it. I was like, it's McVay, Belichick, Gruden, mm -hmm. Sean Payton, Belichick a bunch more times. Harbaugh and uh, Mike Tomlin. Well, per Henry Lockwood on part of my take, Belichick's not that good of a head coach. That's true. So I don't know false, what this. False, that's what you said false. on the on on that's Monday's true. show, I believe. But uh, that that is like a cool stat to have. But it's dumb because once you but look at cool. it, you're like it's six six and zero against uh, Bill Belichick, and the but, only time he's lost, Andy Reid. Okay, that's that's relevant. That's when it gets relevant. That's relevant. Yes. But beating Belichick six times is pretty good. That is pretty cool. But I, it, like when you say twelve and one, you're like, damn, he beats all the Super Bowl winning head coaches. Yeah. Well, he just beat Belichick six times. I got some. Uh, I did. I dove deep into the grass at this stadium last night. I ended up watching two ten minute long videos of the guys installing the grass. They do like a whole behind the scenes of what happens because last year, you remember, I, was it who played over in Europe last year? Maybe the uh, the Bucks. The Bucks might have played there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the grass was an issue. Everybody was slipping everywhere. It was a bad scene. So they fixed it? So the NFL just cucked the shit out of the Bundesliga. And they said, if we're going to play a game over here next year, the NFL is going to choose what type of grass you Love have it. to play on. We're so, talking Bermuda? So we, we, it's a hybrid. Split grass? It's a hybrid. So it's like 90% grass, 10% synthetic woven into it. Interesting. So they put it down a week ago. Apparently, it got rave reviews in the first soccer game. Mm. I don't know how that translates to the NFL, but it's a brand new grass system that they have over there it's not it's like it's like grass with hair plugs yeah it's exactly. the top of dave's head exact exactly it was uh it was grown in holland and then they moved the grass to germany and installed it in germany i'm gonna say right now the grass is gonna suck you can't move grass from holland to germany why not i feel like that something something bad happens there well if it's grass grown in holland there might that's be some true. other stuff in that's there. true that's true that'd be awesome if they played a game on hemp yeah. On a hemp field. I hemp was the future for a while. Oh, it's still Remember is. when everyone was like hemp clothes, oh, hemp this, sustainable George, hemp. George Washington was fifty percent hemp. Hemp, yeah. His teeth were hemp. Horse teeth. They said uh, uh they did an interview with Tyreek Hill this week and they asked him what to look for going into this game, and he said, You guys got it all wrong. I'm not the most important player on this team. Two is not the most important player on this team. You know who is? Alec Ingold. Ooh, the fullback. Love that. Just got paid. Therefore, Alec Ingold anytime touchdown this weekend. The only thing I'm I'm nervous about, um, so I, I probably will take the Dolphins. Um, the Chiefs lead the league in drops. They drop more balls against the Broncos, so they, I'm sure their their lead has grown. Uh, after the Broncos game, Patrick Holmes kind of like weirdly said, like, yeah, they they did a good job of taking away 87, and it's not it's not great when they do that when taking away Travis Kelsey. Which it seems like why hasn't more teams been doing this? 
I think maybe teams will start doing it because all their wide receivers drop balls. And they're starting yeah. to be like, hey, you know what wouldn't be the worst is seeing if Kadarius Tony can catch like 10 balls. Has the NFL figured out Travis Kelsey yeah, finally? Well, I think it's the, the NFL has finally figured out that the Chiefs might have some work in progress when it comes to the wide receiver position. I am of a firm belief that even if the Chiefs lose this game, I'm not freaking out about the Chiefs. I think they're still a, a Super Bowl winning caliber team. Uh, and the Broncos game was a weird game. And they might lose to the Dolphins. But they do have to figure out guys who can catch the ball. It was a flu game. We can write it off it to the flu, flu game. It and sucks. their defense is good. And they, they should run the ball more. Andy Reid, we're, we're back in the full circle of Andy Reid being like, hey, in the red zone, maybe have Isaiah Pacheco run the ball. No, he doesn't do that. Andy Reid's not going to do yeah. that. He's going to throw some weird screen passes every now and again, and he'll be like, that's basically the same as running the football. Yeah. The running back has the ball in his hand. Yeah. Uh, nerd Nugget, since you screamed in our ear. By the way, that that just shows how unbiased I am because that was a that was a stat it's I true. brought, and I was like, this stat stinks. Dolphins fans will love that. Yeah. No, that stat stinks. It's a great stat. No, it's not because it's six out of the 12 is Belichick. So he's beaten Sean Payton, Sean Payton twice, Sean McVay, John Gruden, John Harbaugh, and Mike Tomlin. But his own loss against Andy Reid, December 13th. Oh, you didn't find a new nerd nugget? You couldn't think on the fly? I could have. Yeah, good stat. Could've. It was a good stat. Hank's messing with my headphones Thanks. right now. That's uh, good. Yeah, I asked him to turn down. I think the damn. That, <laughs> oh, that Jake, now we're just not on. You know what? Jake Jake dropped the hardest cuss word I've ever really, heard in my now life. Now we're really loud. We're not. Jake, are you a bad boy now? I'm mad at myself. I yeah, apologize. You scared the fuck out of me. Now I'm going. I feel awful. The damn it. It's okay, Jake. Next play. Next, Next play. play. Next, Next play. play. You know what? We'll start with Seahawks Ravens, and why don't you give us the Nerd Nuggets start? Better be good. Ravens safety Geno Stone leads the NFL with five interceptions. He's recorded a pick in three straight games and four of his last five. His five interceptions tie Ed Reed in 2007 for most by a Raven through the first eight games of a season. Okay. All right. Yeah, I do like the Ravens' defense. They're legit and very legit. I also like Kenneth Walker a lot. I've realized that every time I look at Kenneth Walker, he's breaking off something special. Yeah, but all right. So my problem with Kenneth Walker, I feel like in the first quarter of every game, he has like a forty-yard run, and then he doesn't do anything else after. He's okay. And this is also just based well, fully anecdotally on the last game. Just so before Seahawks fans correct me and be like, "That's not true." I'm literally basing it on one game. They also stop giving him the ball sometimes. Yeah, like they. He should be a bell cow. You know what? I'm calling on Pete Carroll. Make Kenneth Walker a bell cow running back. Well, keep giving the ball. Pete wants to let Geno cook. He does, but <laughs> let let Kenneth walk. Um, the big story here is we, we had a couple of weird uh, quotes. We'll get to the Antonio Pierce and the Raiders and the Giants, but Gus Edwards said this week, I'm ready for it. I'm hoping I get a big load again this week. Mm -hmm. Craving those loads. He wants a load. He wants a big load. Yeah, give it to him. I This is... DK I, will do it. I'm so excited about this game because I ha I do think the, Ra the Seahawks are good. But I, like in my the back of my head, I'm like maybe the Ravens are really good and they just smash them and they, maybe they just go. Do you, it's crazy looking at the splits, how bad Geno is against man and the Ravens can play both. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know. I feel like the Ravens like last week was kind of a sleepwalk. They beat the Cardinals. They probably should have beaten by more. Uh, and they were playing not a great like that was like a B minus C plus effort from them. This week I feel like they're going to get up and. We've talked about it all year. Lamar Jackson versus the NFC. Yep. They're Domin not ready for that speed. Dominant. And uh, the Seahawks, I would feel more comfortable betting on them this week if they if they hadn't taken first place in the division on their yeah. own. Now too many people are talking about the Seahawks. I know. I liked it before when we were like, the Seahawks are good. The Plus Seahawks, 400. We were eye, on it. Yeah. Keep your eye on the Seahawks. But now that they're in that top spot. Every casual out there is going to look at the standings and be like, wow, the Seahawks are good. Seahawks are good. Yeah, we knew the Seahawks were good. Now they might be too good that they might be bad again. I do like the Leonard Williams uh, beefing up that defensive line. That is that a, good, a good trade. That is a good pickup. Yeah. I'd say that's a, a fleecing. Trade. Yeah. And he was, he actually said it was, uh, it was a situation where they were the, who's the GM for the Giants? Uh, Shone? Is that right? Sure. Joe? Sure. Joe Shone. Yeah, Joe Shone. Um, you don't hear it often, but he l l went to Leonard Williams. He's like, hey, we weren't going to trade you, but the Seahawks called you cool with this. And he was like, yeah. Yeah, I would want to go. Doesn't too. happen often. Hell yeah, the GM's like, hey, you cool with this? One reason I do like the Seahawks, though, is they've got a good secondary. The Legion of Spoon, Legion of Spoon guys. Yep. And I feel like they're going to do some damage against that Ravens passing attack. Mm -hmm. We are on Odell Beckham touchdown watch. But I feel like the, I feel like the Seahawks defense is good enough to shut down 
the passing, but then Lamar just might decide, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just run the ball. I'm yeah. gonna run, run, run it. I just I I, I have that Ravens Lions game in my head where like maybe the Ravens are the a big game type of team. Mm-hmm. They play down to their competition. Does you know, this... They lost to the Colts. Like they, you know, the the Cardinals covered the spread. Do the Ravens? I I like maybe it's not as simple as I've made it in my head. It's basically Ravens play uh inferior opponent, take the inferior opponent. Ravens play an NFC team, take the Ravens. Ravens, Ravens take the AFC North team, just take the underdog. Does this count as a big game? I think this is a big this game. It's a big game. It's a big game. It's a big game. I think this might be the biggest game of the early slate. It's absolutely a big game. Yeah, big yeah. game. Uh, okay, next up, Vikings and Falcons. Taylor Heineke time. Yeah. We finally made it. We got it. We, we, we made it there, guys. He also had a great Halloween costume this week. Did you see that? No. So him and his girlfriend or wife, I don't know, but uh, they went together. She dressed up like a uh, like a car with lights on her boobs, and then he went as a deer that just stared at her boobs all night, deer in the headlights. I did see that. Pretty that good. That was awesome. Pretty creative work by Taylor Heineke. Uh, so he would be getting some purple and gold Jordans if they win this weekend. I'm excited to see that. Uh, Flores is the biggest blitzer in the NFL. Mm-hmm. He sends a blitz more often than any other team. Heineke is very good against the blitz. Yes. So I like the Falcons in this. I also uh, continue to love Arthur Smith with all my heart. We've talked about his fantasy football fuckery. Uh, he also just tried to gaslight the entire American public because it was one week ago today uh, that he said, Arthur Smith says Desmond Ritter criticism due to toxic groupthink. A lot of people don't watch film. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, Taylor Heineke's now the starter. Well, I, <laughs> he was like, he, he he got us all off the off the scent for a second. He's like, you guys are idiots. You're all fucking group thinks. Like, no, I think we're right. And he's like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I was joking. I think he's using an excuse, too, because he's saying that Ritter, he's not right. He's not like he's not himself right now. Oh, so Heineke. Concussion. I think he's still saying that Heineke is a temporary starter. OK, but I think that if Heineke so plays, he's still gaslighting. us. Yes. Yes. So if Heineke <laughs> plays well. Then Arthur Smith will be like, "Well, you know, we got to ride. We got to ride the hot hand for a little bit, and then we'll go back to Ritter once Heineke starts stinking." Uh, but no, I think Heineke's going to take this job. Yeah. As for Jaron Hall, QBs making their first career starter thirty-eight, seventy, and one straight up in the last decade. Okay. Not great. No, not 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 what you like to see. And they're three and fifteen straight up on the road. Do we know if Nick Mullins is he still on the IR? Have they brought him off yet, or is Josh? No, Dobbs, I think it's week ten. So Dobbs is going to be QB two. Dobbs is gonna be QB two. Okay, the pastor not. I love it. I love the, I love the Falcons this weekend. I think the I think if Dobbs can get in this game, if Dobbs does get in this game, he'll probably be good because he'll be in relief. Yeah, and fresh start. Who was that? Was that Freeman? Was that Josh Freeman that played for? I think he played for the Vikings after like three days. He did the Baker Mayfield. Yeah, one time yeah. We got traded and then started on the Vikings and probably had the worst game ever. Yeah. in the history of football. You got to learn the play. It's tough. It's tough to step in after just a couple days on the team. I I think. What we can take out of this week, if nothing else, the fact that the Vikings did not sign Carson Wentz, I think there's still some justice in that's this nice, world. Yeah. I think that's we're all winners for not having to watch Carson Wentz on Sunday. Wait, you love the Falcons in this game? I do. I do so love the Falcons. The only reason I, I just don't, love Taylor Heineke. I, I love Taylor Heineke too. I just don't know if the Falcons can win by more than four and a half against anyone. I think they, they can. They feel like a team that just will play it will be a late, like red zone uh fun game, like where we're like, oh shit. Get your eyes on this. Yeah. Last possession. Even should, last week, they almost won. Should we have the conversation about Jordan Addison that we had about Justin Jefferson like three weeks ago? If you're Jordan Addison, should you sit out for the should rest of the season? Should you trade him? Yeah. Sit out for the rest of the season. You're too valuable. Try to get a contract this offseason. Just like have the two of them playing chicken with each other the whole time. It is kind of a bummer because Addison looked awesome. Yeah. I think the Vikings are going to like be a little galvanized. Like, hey, we're playing good ball. The NFC. Who's going to be the seventh seed in the NFC? Somebody, is the biggest question. Somebody bad. Somebody bad. Somebody it really might be bad. a second team from the NFC South. Yeah, which is God. crazy. Because if you go through it, Saints it's, and Falcons can do it. It's like no doubters. Obviously, things can change. Niners, Eagles, Cowboys, Lions, uh, NFC South representative, mm-hmm. Seahawks, seventh. <laughs> mm. I like how we put the Niners first as a no doubter. Above the Seahawks, yeah, that's true. That are, that are beating them right now, but but seventh is going to be a combination of like Saints, Bucks, Falcons, Vikings. Yeah, yuck. bad, yuck. bad, bad team. Commanders, if they win a couple, no, no, we're not doing that. Rams, we're not going to do that. It's bad teams. It's I could bad. I could be talked into. I know I was pretty down on them, like fire sale, get rid of every, everybody. 
I could still be. I can always be talked into the Commanders maybe squeaking. Dude, the if playoffs. they win this week, I've seen weird shit happen in the NFC East. Yeah, if they win this week, all right. What's the nerd nugget? Because let's talk about the Commanders Patriots next. Vikings rookie wide receiver Jordan Addison joined Elite Company last Sunday. He became the sixth player in Super Bowl era to catch their seventh touchdown in the first eight games. He just shut it down. Shut, it shut down. down for the season. You're shut too valuable. Down. Shut it down. Uh, all right, Commanders Patriots. How we feeling, boys? I mean, we have an opportunity to beat a Super Bowl winning coach. Uh, it's, it's very hard to do in this league. This would make Sam Howell, I think, one and one, one and two if he can beat Bill Belichick in Against Super Bowl lifetime winning Super Bowl winning coaches. Okay. Yeah. Oh Who no! Wait, they, no beat? wait. The Eagles lost the Super Bowl yeah, they last did. year. They yeah. did. I forgot about that. Uh, this is a win-win for me. I think you know if they lose, it's better draft draft capital. But then you lose to PFT, and if and we win, call you small. We beat PFT. And I can just hold that over him forever. In a, in a year where we're tanking, we can still be the commanders. And we're not tanking. It's a tank off. Really, the loser of this team of this game wins. Winner takes Belichick. Is that what you're gonna? You know. Oh some, yeah, there's some, some fan fiction some out, there. out there. Since you brought it up, Mike Hank, Florio. I mean, it, it, this is funny because usually we just take Mike Florio's fan fiction, run with it on the show, just to piss Hank off. I think Florio took our fan fiction that we came up with on the show, which is that Josh Harris wants a big splash. He wants a big name coach. Belichick, probably at the end of his tenure in New England, why not get him to D.C.? He can coach lacrosse at the Naval Academy. Annapolis is like 30 minutes from FedEx Field. It's probably everything that he's wanted. He probably really wants to coach for the Commanders. It was a Florio fan fiction special because the report basically just said, like, when the year ends, the Commanders might reach out to Belichick. Or I think, reach out to Kraft to see what it would take to I, get Belichick. I think these conversations which, which is, are happening. Which means nothing. I think, you know you know who's making this? No, co- no it's hey, conversations hey, where Josh Harris are like, we need to get a big coach. Yeah. Who's the biggest coach? Bill Belichick. That'd be cool. Well, thank Florio. Conversation w- over. The entire article was basically Florio saying, it would make sense in my mind if yeah. this happened. Which is a great way to like put a report out there without putting a report out there. Um, here's how it's going to happen, though, Hank. What's the common denominator here? Between Josh Harris, Bill Belichick, mm. bad handshakes, awkward guy. Awkward. There's a guy that's been on part of my take, Ruben. Uh, I feel like Ruben uh, is going to. What does Ruben, Ruben have to do with Bel- Ruben Mike, and Kraft are aligned? Y- yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Ruben is going to be the go-between. Ruben's going to make this deal happen for me. Would this just destroy you if PFT got to root for Bill Belichick every week? I would become the biggest Bill Belichick apologist. I don't think ever. so. Like I, I would, I would no. It, it, it's like when people said, you know, to destroy Brady won a, a Super Bowl. I was rooting for Brady. I'd be rooting for. I would. I would like to, you know, join up with my guy PFT and and, and see Belichick bring a team to their first Super Bowl in forever. No, it would destroy you. You you got low key destroyed when Brady won that Super I Bowl. I didn't. I bet. Like I made the biggest bet of my life on the Bucks. Yeah, but ever time. but ever since then, what if what if we got McDaniel's and Belichick get mm. the gang back together in DC? Mm. All all the whole squad. All the better. Yeah, fuck it. Whole squad. Yeah. So how you, you you feel confident in this game? No. Okay. I wouldn't either because Kendrick Bourne being out for the season, it feels like that's the one bright spot that you guys had. Defense is banged up. Offense is bad. And Washington just up. traded their whole defense, which, by the way, uh, can't feel good to be Chase Young right now because it feels like everyone was pissed that Montez Sweat got traded and everyone was kind of happy Chase Young got traded. Yeah. There's been some like, leaks and being like, yeah, no, he didn't play team defense and all this stuff. That's, so. that's kind of what I've been saying about <laughs> Chase Young. Yeah. I actually think it's good for both the Bears and the Niners. The Niners get like a rental. And I don't they think also, they're going to extend him. And they get a guy who's not the dude. And like He has to slot in. Underneath Bosa. Yeah, he's going to go there, and he can't be acting like he's the baddest dude ever on right. the defense. He has to kind of humble himself a little bit. And he can still make some splash plays, and he's been pretty good this year. But Montez Sweat, Big Cat, can we have the conversation about Montez Sweat? Yeah. Because when the trade went down, both our reaction was the same, which was you guys got a very good player. Yeah. He's a better player overall than Chase Young. He's on the field. He's more productive. He's a dude. We also thought – there's no chance in hell the Bears don't extend him when they give up a second round pick. Which I also still think is true. I still think he's going to be extended, but Montez Sweat said yesterday that he's not close to making a decision on that. Ideally, you would and, want the deal to be but, basically done by but the time every, the trade goes down. Okay, so people were running with this quote. What the fuck do we think Montez Sweat is going to say? He has leverage right now. Why would he be like, yeah, I'm here and we're about to sign a long-term deal? Mm-hmm. Ryan Poles came out and like, we're working. The first thing we're doing is working on a long-term deal. So everyone was, listen, the Bears are a joke of an organization. I get it. They're fodder for everyone on the internet. I understand how this game is played. People just looked at Montez Sweat's quote and just ignored Ryan Poles' quote. 
Of course, Montez Sweat is going to be like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm not close to signing. He he would be an idiot to be like, yeah, I want to be in, on the Bears long term and say that, and then all of his leverage is gone. Ryan Pohl is going to get it done, and if he doesn't, he's fired. Yeah, he's fired. He should so, be. He should be if he doesn't get. Of it. course, it's a, a clearly fireable. Offense. Of course, so that like it, it was it was. I understood it, but it was also maddening that everyone was running with just Montez Sweat's comment and not Ryan Poles. So I went from 100% he's going to be extended when the deal was done to now I'm like 95% he's going to get the extension done. He's going to get it done because Ryan Poles' job is literally on the line. It like, is. Okay, he might have to overpay him. I don't know. I just it, – it was it, – that is just how it works. The mm -hmm. Bears get clowned. I get it. They deserve to get clowned. There's a lot of shit that they need to be clowned for, but this one – Everyone was just going with one quote and just ignoring the other quote that Ryan Poles is like, the first thing we're doing is working on an extension. And if anybody out there is saying, wow, the Bears should be embarrassed that they gave up a second round pick and the Niners only gave up a third rounder for Chase Young, you're telling on yourself that you don't watch ball. Yeah. You don't watch ball. I've watched every snap that those guys have not, taken. Not, not only that, but Chase Young has not been able to stay on the field. Yeah. That matters. Uh, let's see. Where was the exact quote? Uh, Ryan Poles. Uh, Ryan Pohl says the Bears are working to get a contract done now with Montez Sweat. Okay, good. So, like, that that was ignored somehow by everyone so on, online. Is the 5%, when I say 95% chance the deal gets done, the 5% is my personal delusion because I have considered a world in which Montez Sweat is just such a back. fan of yeah. Washington that he's like, you know what, trade me, and then I'm not going to do the deal, and then secretly I'm going to come back to you guys in the offseason. It's, a, and it's sign a, the everyone's there. fan fiction about what, every team that ever trades anyone. What if it happens? It could. What if it, What if Juan Soto comes back to it DC could. too? It could. Um, also, the Commanders are 1-0 this week. We had an organizational win, uh, as reported by Diana Rossini on Tuesday, that we had an organ organizational win based on the fact that we were able to trade away two players and get two draft picks. Yeah. So we're 1-0 during the week. We're riding a hot streak, and we're going to the lighthouse, and we're going to take the lighthouse out. And, Hank, I, I told you before we sat down that there should be some stakes involved. Yes. And I said, think of a bet. I don't want you to tell me. And so Hank has an idea for a bet. Yeah, my idea is uh, we're obviously still you know decorating the, the studio. It's still active. Things are moving around. You'll probably notice in the background things are – changing kind of episode by episode there is that poll behind pft mm. that if the patriots would win i would like to paint a replica of uh the patriots lighthouse so it's just always behind him now the lighthouse if the commanders win are you willing to admit i want a full written apology maybe even a powerpoint on how it's a fraud lighthouse no, that has nothing to do. That with absolutely well, no, because should be only it. stakes on my side. What about yours? Well, I'm, I'm open to stakes. I okay, so there it is. It's just a bet with me and PFT. Or me All right, and you, I'll talk cat. to PFT. PFT, mm -hmm. you should make him admit that it's a fraud lighthouse and do a PowerPoint and apologize. I think you. I think you should admit it's a fraud lighthouse. Good idea. And you should do a PowerPoint and apologize. Great idea. <laughs> and you should change your X.com bio to say the lighthouse in New England is fraudulent. Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is the tallest lighthouse in North America, period, mm. end of sentence, mm. double period. And maybe also on your Hinge profile, too. You're not a Rhea? <laughs> they won't let me on, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> uh, what else do we have to do? I don't know. I've gotten recommendations. They probably they, think they you don't, don't have a job they don't because want, you go yeah, on they vacation don't, so They don't much. want me. Uh, I will do that. My only condition is that I I will just I'll let me I'll just acknowledge Cape Hatteras is the tallest lighthouse in the world or whatever. No, you have to say you have a fraud lighthouse. I'll do the I'm going to do that via PowerPoint yeah. presentation. Yeah, and in your X.com bio, it just says the Cape Hatteras lighthouse. Okay, is the tallest in North America. All right, period. Like we got a bet. End of sentence. Double period. I love it. All right, and it has to stay up there for the entire football season. Now, is this spread or straight up? I mean, it's got to be straight up. Yeah, straight up. I mean, the Patriots shouldn't be favored by three points against anybody right now. Okay. Also, we're going next man up in D.C. You forget about next man up. It is actually, I mean, it's a real thing that there's guys who have been backups who now get to play for a contract. Yeah, that's if real. This, if this was, if this was, you know, my team aside, I would love the commanders in this spot as a hungry dog watching. Sam Howell's first half last last week was like the mm -hmm. Patriots game was on and they were playing ugly. And then the, the commanders game was on the other TV and. Sam Howell is just throwing dime after dime after dime after dime. Yeah. Sammy Dimes. And Belichick's going to see this team up close. He's going to fall in love with it. He's going to be doing the binocular meme, just looking at our guys on the sidelines. Like, man, 
damn, I wish I could coach for the Washington Commanders. Damn, they yeah. could use some like some dogs on their defense. Yeah, yeah. Only uh, difference between Mac and Sam Howell's coaching, though. Remember that. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Good point, Max. It's coaching. Uh, all right, Nerd Nugget. Commanders quarterback Sam Howell eclipsed 2,000 passing yards and 200 completions last week, becoming the 10th quarterback all time to reach 200 completions through nine career games. It's the fastest in franchise history. Wow. Wow. Pretty, we've got a the lot of to 200. great quarterbacks in our history, too. Wow. Uh, okay, Bears at Saints next. Uh, we talked about Montez Sweat. I have to just quickly say something about uh, Matt Eberflus. Um, he had a quote. Yesterday, well, first of all, the Bears have uh, now fired a second coach mm. under mysterious circumstances that HR was involved in. Why do they keep saying HR was involved in this in this firing? <laughs> That's such a weird go to line to say. He also, uh, Ry- or Matt Eberflus said that th- there's a a bunch of guys, or no, I think Ryan Pohl said there's a bunch of guys with integrity here, and it's like wh- how. Do we have one guy who has all the integrity that's raising the average? Because we've mm-hmm. fired two coaches now, HR involved under mysterious things. Iberflu said, we set the expectations day one. You have to treat everybody with respect and be on time. Yeah. So he did one of the two bad things that you're not supposed to do. Yeah. He. Um, so Iberflu said, the culture in our building is outstanding, noting that the Bears are 2-2 two and two in their last four games. Just forgetting the fact that they were three and eighteen before that, mm-hmm. two so, and two in their last—that's that's a massive, massive upswing. Ryan Poles also credited Matt Eberflus for uh, uh, taking on adversity and overcoming adversity. I don't think you get credit when the adversity is being a bad coach. If you bring on your own adversity like and then he, you overcome it, yeah, like he's he's doing a great job coaching a bad coach team. Yeah, but well, he's the coach. He's outperforming expectations that he set for himself <laughs> yeah. with his past history. Like imagine having to coach a bad coach team yeah. that you made a bad coach team. It's, it's like, hard. That's adversity. It is. It's like when Dogecoin pops like 5%, you're like, wow, it's really overcoming some adversity right now. Yeah. There's also some weird things going on that people in the Chicago media think that uh, the bears were leaking bad stories to NBC on Sunday Night football about Justin Fields trying to like basically, uh, start to move away from him. Hmm. Did they make him wear sunglasses on the sidelines? That might have been it. They're yeah. Like, we can at least get Big Cat to be mad about this. Yeah, that was very funny when you were it, angry for like 15 seconds. I was. Then. It's the loss. I, I talked about it with Max after. It's really just the loss. Like yeah. when you lose, it's just you, you, you have to – you can't wear sunglasses when you lose. You don't want to stand out at all. Right. It's like when a, a quarterback – when Cam Newton would give his post-game um, – like media availability and he'd step up to the podium and he'd wear, he would be dressed like a lamp from the seventies. It's like, Hey dude, um, you should have a winning outfit that you wear and then a right. losing outfit that you wear. Because if you lose, everyone's going to talk about your cowboy hat with tassels on it. Right. Like remember when Fitzpatrick went on his winning streak with the box and he was wearing like the, you know, the chest hair popping out and everything. If he did that after a loss, I'd be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah. Just go in sweats yeah. after a loss. Uh, okay. So yeah, I, I, I mean, maybe, Tyson Bajan, I don't know. The Bears just, they keep making lines that are like, ooh, eight and a half. They pay them too. Yeah. These guys get paid to play football. <laughs> yes. The uh, the stat about Derek Carr I'm looking at, though, is he is the worst quarterback against the spread when he's a favorite in the NFL right now. Ooh. So this is lifetime for Derek mm. Carr. He stinks against the spread as a favorite. He's one and five against the spread as a Saint when he's a favorite. Um, however, the coin has the Saints winning – Eight and zero. So this would be uh, this would be nine and zero for the coin if they win. I've uh, told everyone if you want to if you like the Saints this week, which you should because they'll beat the Bears. Bet them to win the uh, the the division. Mm-hmm. Now's the time. It's a free win. Bet every team who play every team who plays the Bears. Just bet that team to win the division because you know you'll get at least better odds once they beat the Bears. That's a fact. It's a it's a it's a fail proof uh, way to go about this gambling. And I am rooting against the Bears. Nothing personal. You but, want the pick. But I want yeah, the pick now. Want the I pick. want the pick now, and I then I want Montez Sweat back in the offseason. I understand. Uh, all right, Nerd Nugget. New Bears defensive end Montez Sweat is one of six NFL players to record at least five sacks and ten quarterback kicks in each of his first five seasons, joining Brian Burns, Max Crosby, Chris Jones, Miles Garrett, and TJ Watt. Those are Ooh. pretty good players that he's, he's lumped good. in there with. He's Ideally, good. you would want a guy like that on your team. Yes. Do you think... It, you think we could hang out with him, Montez? Yeah. I got a lot in common with Montez him. Sweat. I hit him up. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. I, I, I could follow him. I, I mean, I did follow him. I could hit him up. Yeah, hit I him up. His DMs. Let him open. know, like, hey, if you if you're looking for some good dive bars, if you want to go drink some Malort with me, I'll show you the ropes in Chicago. 
to DC guys that are you know new to the city. Credit to me. Just want to say this has nothing to do with uh, uh, Montez Sweat. There's a kid who's 7'3", who's deciding between Purdue and Wisconsin to play basketball next year. He's deciding on Friday, and I wrote the DM, didn't send it. That's good. Yeah, 17-year-old. That's good. That's progress. Yeah, yeah. That was progress because I started the DM, and I was like, wait, what are you doing? This is bad. Where's he from? Uh, I don't know. Okay. But yeah. But he's he's tall. He's 7'3". He's tall, and he yeah. could go to Wisconsin. I was going to, like, the, the DM was like, you know, congrats on deciding. Enjoy the day. If you have any questions about Madison, let me know. And I was like, stop it. This is a 17 year old. You're 38. Mm -hmm. So Daniel Jacobson. Yeah. Oh. 2024, three star Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. What about Baron Trump? Where are we at with Darren, Baron Trump? I was playing soccer, bro. Process. Yeah. But, soccer. I mean, just think about how good he'd be on the court. He'd be sick. Baron Trump, be number one overall NBA draft pick would be hilarious. He'd be a problem. Uh, by the way, if you want to go to the Bears uh, Saints game at the Dome, you can use game time. Game Time is an exclusive ticketing app for Barstool Sports. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. L last minute tickets, uh, flash deals, zone deals. I bought tickets for the boys to go to Camp Randall, not Max, because he thought the World Series was going to be on for the Phillies. Uh, so, Game Time, they're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets. Right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last-minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. 15 hour going to Iowa. Northwestern. Iowa Northwestern yeah. at Wrigley. Could be so a great game. With zone deals, you pick the last section, and or you pick the section, and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem code PMT for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, moving along. Cardinals at Browns. Clayton Toon versus P.J. Walker. We can't wait. Oh, man, I can't wait. What a great game this is. Um, I've talked myself a little bit into Clayton Toon, though. I have not. I kind of have. Okay. I watched some of his preseason tape. Um, I don't think P.J. Walker is that much better than Clayton Toon. That's what I'm going off of. P.J. Walker's never lost a start at home. In professional football. Okay. XFL Ke and NFL. Kevin Stefanski stinks when he's a favorite. Okay. Uh, stinks. Clay ten, ten, and, 10 and 20 against the spread. Clayton Toon has to go up against the Browns defense. Mm. Also, the Cardinals defense is like last or second to last in basically every metric. Yeah. That Cowboys win that they had really carried a lot of water. Yeah. It really set, It really got us off the scent for a while there. I think also the, the Cardinals are injured. The Browns, I, I keep going back to P.J. Walker. P, the game plan for Stefanski should be what we talked to him about this offseason. Run the damn ball. Run the damn ball. Stefanski, if you run the damn ball, I know you don't have Chunt anymore because Chubb's out, but you got Jerome Ford, so you got Jareem Funt at your running back position. Yep. Kareem Hunt's still good. Run the damn ball. Run the damn ball. That's all you got to do. Run the damn ball. And that's our Browns Cardinals. That's really all we need to say for it. Yeah, I think the Browns are going to kill him. That's all I got. I, I do. I just think the defense, like Clayton Toon having just started his first game against the Browns defense, is not going to be fun. And what's the spread now? Is it seven and a half? Seven and a half? Yeah. If it gets up to eight, I'm going to bet the Cardinals. That's your that's your buy point? Oh, it's eight. Eight? Going to bet the Cardinals. Cardinals. What? No, wait. Take back. Take back. I'm going to bet the Cardinals first half again. Yes. Cardinals first Keep half. Keep riding it. Keep yep. riding it. Uh, all right. Nerd Nugget. Run the damn ball indeed. This is a matchup between two of the top five rushing attacks in the league. Uh, Cleveland second, Arizona's fourth. Teams have combined eight players who have rushed for at least 100 yards this season. Mm. I'm shocked that the Cardinals are fourth in the league. I guess James Conner was getting off to a pretty good start. Yeah. Now they've got DeMarcado. Yeah, Mari DeMarcado. It's a great yeah. name. Yeah. 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 So maybe make it like an Army-Navy game. Just run. Just run the damn ball. Just run. All right, next game, bad game, Rams-Packers. These teams stink. And Matt Stafford might not play. So we got and Brett Rippon. Brett Rippon, Matt Stafford might not play, and if he does play, I think it's going to be cold and maybe a little rainy, which means you can't grip the football. He's got a thumb injury. Tough. Mm, I, I still like the Rams. I feel like Sean McVay, if you got a shitty quarterback, Sean McVay can make the most out of it. That's a fact. Right? And Matt LaFleur, he's had uh, eight weeks to work with a shitty quarterback. And what Gutenkutz, or whatever yeah, his name is. The GM. The GM said about Jordan Love, which is like, Jordan Love is not quite what we're looking for just yet. Mm. I don't believe in Jordan Love. He's mm. not wrong, but he said it out loud. Well, listen, uh, I think Jordan Love, you know, doesn't have a lot of receivers. Offensive line stinks. You got to give him some more time. 
He's a young prospect. He's a young prospect. He's in his fourth year, but that doesn't matter. You got to give him some more time. Yeah, I mean, he's basically a rookie. Where are you going, Hank? Oh, he's turning on the TV again. He's, he's basically a rookie right he's now. He's basically a rookie. Yeah, but he stinks. Uh, I also, the the Rams can't run the football, and that's where the Packers are kind of can be gashed. So, yeah, I think I, I'm just going to keep buying low on the Packers. I'm also interested in Brett Rippon. I'm interested in from like a, that's that's a curious guy to maybe watch play football because mm-hmm. he loves to turn the ball over. No, no, but Hank, I know you're shaking your head. He takes a lot of chance. He's going to be fun. I'm not saying he's going to be good. I think Brett Rippon might be a fun quarterback. 13 for 27, 112 yards. Ooh. No, no. One touchdown, you two interceptions. You don't watch Ooh. ball. Brett Rippon's going to go 17 for 25, and he's going to throw one touchdown, two interceptions, and he's going to have 228 yards. That's gross. It's still fu- He's still going to throw two picks. That's fun. I guess. And they're going to win. He has four touchdowns and eight interceptions on yeah. his career. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He loves picks. He does love picks. Yeah. It seems like he very much loves picks. Uh, okay. Oh, he had one game. When was this? Oh, did he come into relief? Yeah, he came in relief last week. I think yeah. he's, I remember he started the uh, the game when Blake Bortles got COVID. You remember that one? Yes. It was like the Broncos and the Jets. I think on Thursday night, when Blake Bortles gave the entire Broncos COVID. I was trying to spin it the other way. <laughs> yeah. Where Blake Bortles got assaulted by COVID. All time, all time Blake Bortles move. We love him for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, he had he had a game uh, where he went nineteen for thirty one, two forty two, two touchdowns and three interceptions. Yeah. See, that's, that's a, fun, a that's, that's a, a fun full stat line. line. He's yeah. fun. That's a full stat line. Uh, okay, Nerd Nugget. According to Spotrack, the Packers and Rams are the two youngest teams in the NFL. The Packers have an a- average age of 25.3, Rams 25.8, Packers 24 rookies, Rams 21. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, is it good if your rookies stink? Probably not. If you stink and it's we like, got it, maybe but we're they, young. They have to get even younger. Yeah. The yeah. Packers are like as close as you can get to having the debate of if the best college team could beat the worst NFL team. Yeah. They're and young. they did in week one. They're young. Uh, all right. <laughs> the Bucks at Texans. This is going to be a fun game. This is a decide what you are game. Like Ooh. the Bucks are, are if they don't win this game, that would be four straight losses after a three and one start. Put a fork in it. And if the Texans, you know, they're teetering right on that edge. They lose to the Panthers last week. Back home. I like the Texans in this game. I, w- I would hope. That uh, the Bucks defense, they can still stop the run. Uh, and the Texans offense, they run the most, I think, in the league first down, which just let CJ Stroud sling it. Mm, there's something nice, you know, about a, a team that when it's first and 10, okay, run. run the ball. Run the ball. And they get three yards. Now it's second and seven. It's almost like they can't start the drive until they get one run for two yards. Yeah. You, you want to know what football was like in the 90s? <laughs> it was always second and eight. Yeah. Always yeah. second and yes. eight. And it was awesome. And yeah. we loved it so much. It's like, oh, no, this isn't working. Well, eventually it will. Because guess what? Yeah. you got to keep leaning on it. Yeah. It, eventually, the, you'll you'll get maybe even a second and six. You need to establish the run <laughs> early on downs. And then, it, yeah, it would become like second and eight. And then it would be third and four. Then you would make three yards. And, and then you punt. Slant. And then yeah. you punt on fourth and one. Yeah. That's how football is meant to be played. That's what we grew up watching. We throw the ball too much on first down now. But I think that if the Texans are smart, they'll throw the ball on first down a little bit here. They probably will. And we've um, we kind of hammered home a lot of stuff about Todd Bowles on this podcast. He's not a good coach. I came across a stat that took my breath away about Todd Bowles. Ooh. Um, and when, you're a Todd Bowles guy. I used to be. I'm a, I'm a recovering Todd Bowles Called guy. Called him a top 10 coach in like 2018. I think it was 2017. Yeah. It was a long and time ago. I was ago. like, oh. I was young, dumb, full of calm. I grew up a lot since then. It's it is funny because we've been doing this for so long. There's just still some takes that like just stick in your mind. It's like, oh man, I remember when PFT said that. Yeah, I did say it. Yeah, I didn't mean it, but I said it. You said it. Um, Todd Bowles. So when there's a strong recommendation to go for it on fourth down, strong recommendation, he goes for it 15 percent of the time. 15 <laughs> percent. When there's a toss-up, when it's 50-50, go for it or don't go for it. Do you know what percentage of the time Todd Bowles goes for it when toss it's a toss-up? A toss-up. 50-50%, and this is based on the analytics models that are out there. Like, I think the New York Times has, like, a fourth down bot or whatever. Yeah, yeah, It shows you expected win probability going up or down based on whatever decision. Mm. When it's a 50-50%, how much does Todd Bowles go for it on fourth down? So... 
I don't know. Zero percent. Okay. He goes for it. Christ. I didn't know if it was going to be way high (laughs) or way low, but I wasn't going to get zero. He goes for it zero percent of the time on fourth down when it's a 50 50. Jesus Christ. So Mike Evans was not traded this week. No. Buck for life. Buck for life. Apparently, the Jets. One Jersey guy. The Jets reached out to him, and the Bucks were like, no, we're not out of it. And the crazy thing is, the Bucks are not out of it. No, if they win this game, they're not. They're very much not out of it. Yeah. Like someone's going to have to win the NFC South, and someone's going to have to get that seventh seed. Yeah. Which. If you're a fan of a team that's like in this weird zone, I don't know. I guess you playoffs or playoffs, but man, that seven seed is going to be bad. Mm-hmm. Really bad. bad. Really bad. And I mean, it would be perfectly NFL if, if they somehow won a game. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. You know what I want? I'm seeing the future right now of like what I really desire to happen in the playoffs. Bucks beat the number one. I guess they would be two. The, the number two seed Cowboys mm. first round of the playoffs. Mm. How great would that, that be would for the be takes? Great. Just for the takes. I root for takes. Yeah. Uh, okay, nerd nugget for this game. Both the Bucks and Texans are very responsible with the football. The Texans have the fewest turnovers in the league with four, while the Bucks are tied for second fewest with six. Very mm. responsible football owners. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Um, all right. Late slate. Great, great game. We only have three games in the afternoon, but I'm okay with it because we have one that we can really focus on. Cowboys at Eagles. Uh, Max, I want to hear from you. Can you make sure you press the button to talk? Uh, memes, press that button. Oh, That's okay. Not- he he did for you? Because you you've, you've, you've day, struggled yeah. with pressing buttons today. Yeah, no, that was bad. I thought we were going to talk about that later in Firefest. Well, no, but- we also going to sprinkle it in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is Big Cat... Just asked you to press the button, but you weren't on the button, so memes so, stepped in and pressed Oh, that's the actually, that's you know exactly what, PFT, what that's very you, similar memes. to you, at memes. 7 a.m. on Wednesday yeah. morning when I had to call Max, didn't pick up, memes did pick up, mm-hmm. he pressed the button. That's interesting. Correct. That is correct. But we'll get to it on Firefest. Been doing this podcast for a long-ass time. Just wasn't out on Wednesday. That is correct. <laughs> did you take a lap? I should. You should take a lap. Right now? Yeah. Yeah, go take a lap. Take a lap. Take a lap. All right, we got other stuff we can talk about. I want you to come back out of breath. Um, I'm sure you've seen this PFT, but maybe not everyone who's listening has seen this. Uh, The greatest, maybe fake, but I'm going to say it's real, the greatest fantasy trade offer of all time. Uh, This was on Reddit. Uh, Some guy said, guy in my league is offering Pollard for Christian McCaffrey, and I get to bang his wife one time. (laughs) So here's what he says. He says, guy in my league is three and five and desperate to turn his team around and needs more consistency with running back. Yeah. He sent me a text saying he wants Christian McCaffrey, but there's not really anyone on his team I want. I'm currently seven and one, so I don't need to make any changes, really. He said I could bang his wife one time if I accept the trade and it goes through. Honestly, it's pretty tempting since she has huge tits and I've always fantasized about her. Is it worth throwing my chances to win the ship out the window for a chance to bang his wife? Mm, there's a lot that goes into that. I, how on board do you think the wife is? Does she know? I hope she knows. Does she know? I'm because hoping she knows. There's Doubt a, it. There's a good chance that she doesn't I know hope she knows. this is on the table. If she knows, well, if she doesn't know, this is fucked up. If she knows and down with it, you have to make this trade. But she might only be down for it because she knows that this other guy's fantasy team is so good that she's attracted to him. Mm. But the second they bone, he loses Christian so you McCaffrey. Have to do the trade after. You got to do the trade afterwards because right now she's probably like, God, this guy's in first place in fantasy after eight weeks. And what's That's the, so hot? And, and just play it out. Like, okay, you do this trade, you bang this guy's wife, he wins the championship, and he gets to talk shit to you, and then you're like, but I banged your wife. Yeah, he's got the one up card. Yeah, there's a. I think you got to do it. Mm. If I was this guy and she's got the, huge tits, the trade was proposed to me, I would create my own trophy mm. after banging his wife. Of the wife. Of the wife, yeah. yeah. And that could be like, I got I flags fly forever. I'd raise a banner in my house. Is this a keeper league? Mm. If it's keeper, then it's got to be every year. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I I don't to, think this if it's is real. Keeper, then you, but it's funny. If it's keeper, you get to film it. <laughs> it's very funny. This thing is very very funny. Uh, yeah. So that that is the big trade right now because Tony Pollard has not been good. Mm-hmm. Uh, some sometimes that happens when your feature back. You know, like oh, this guy's got so much pop. You mm-hmm. take away Ezekiel Elliott, doesn't have the pop anymore. All right. So Cowboys at Eagles. Uh, Max took his lap. Dak Prescott kind of owns the Eagles. No, he doesn't. I He's think, eight and three against the Eagles. Yeah, I was going to say what seven and three in the last ten. Eight and three against the Eagles. No. Nah. Well, are you sick, oh, Max? 
No, I just got something in my throat. Good. Okay. Is it, is want, it Jalen Hurts dick? Drop? Mm-hmm. No, I'm good. a cough drop. If you I'm good. You need a cough drop, Max? No. We wouldn't want you to take a cough drop, maybe fall asleep and forget to put out the podcast. I don't know how that would be a cough drop. Cough drops okay. can make you drowsy. Can cough they? Medi- cough medicine. Cough can make medicine. You. Cough, cough drops. Yeah. yeah. You want a robo trip? You want some tussing? No, thank you. Uh, what are the keys you, to the game here? Did you already talk about the poke the bear thing? Oh, yeah. Dak Prescott said, if you see me in a fight with a bear, pour honey on me. Oh, because I, Jerry, that, uh, it's a Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp yeah. I also still don't fully understand what Neither that means. Neither do I. I think it means like if you see me in a fight with a bear, make me more desirable to the bear. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'll whoop the bear's ass too much. Well, it was in response to Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones was asked about the Eagles, and he said, "I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to poke the bear." Oh. And then Dak said that, so he was basically saying, "I want to poke the bear." Oh. Is Dak Prescott like the weirdest guy in the NFL? Yeah. I think I think weird. he's low key very weird. Yeah. Very weird. So um, Max, you, this is a big big game. Because no. if you lose this game, now the Cowboys look totally different. No, it's a massive game. Um, it's unfortunate you won't be able to watch. Okay. We're working we're, on punishments. Yeah, we don't, we haven't decided yeah. what his punishment is yet we'll, for not putting guess, out the podcast. I guess we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, okay. No, yeah, that's... Yeah, no. I can call the game for Max. Oh wow, Ooh. that's torture. That would <laughs> hey. that, that, that would be good. <laughs> that's a good. I was going to suggest that Max gets to listen to it on like the Steve Bartman like yeah. portable yeah. stereo, and you just have to sit on the gambling cave like listening to the stream. Uh, Big Tone DM me with some ideas. One of them was that every Big time Tone's on my, he's one of my guys. Yeah, he DM me with a bunch of ideas. Uh, one of them was that every time Jalen Hurts squats during the game because he squats before every snap, Max mm. also has to squat. Mm. That'd be tough. For those Nick. Oh, that was maybe Nick. Big Tone Horn. Let me see. Big Tone's got some. Let's just read them out real, real quick. Uh, Ma- oh, this one's diabolical. Max has to do a breakdown of every Celtics win for a month and why they win and 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 why they're good and why it could be a problem for the Sixers in the future. I love mm. that. That's a great. That one. would be tough. That would be tough. But I, I'm willing to take. I'm willing to take all punishments. I deserve all punishments. Would you like to apologize? I, I I I've I've apo- apologized on the bird. I guess that that's not the bird anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I thought maybe we should just get a button and see you have to press it a million times. I I, I don't know how I long just, would it take to press a button I, a million I, times. It was, you know what, Piquette? Right now it sounds like Max has acknowledged that he made a mistake and he's but he he almost wants to be punished for it and he yeah, wants to take you're any, bad boy. You want yeah, to be spanked? No, yeah. I'm, I'm you're, ba- you're a sicko, aren't yeah. you? I, you want us to spank you? Actually, I, I've got a good idea. What about a soul patch, Max? Oh, ho, 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 ho. it's a little button. It's it a is cute a little button, button on it's your a button. chin. You never forget the button if you look in the mirror. Because I mean, Max, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, part of my take goes out to a million people every day, right? Not not a brag, just a fact. There are a million people, a million out there that were like, "Where the fuck's my podcast, Max?" And you didn't push one button, and you impacted a million people. All you gotta lives. do is press the button. Max, Negative. my friend was on his honeymoon and he texted me like, "Where is you, the podcast? You ruined my best friend's honeymoon." Wow. Jesus Christ. You should have to fuck that guy's wife. <laughs> <laughs> should we do like uh, put all the punishments together and kind of do them all? Well, you know, no. we'll talk about it. Firefest. We, now's not the time to talk about it. Yeah. Think about the soul patch. <laughs> Think about yeah. Just do, do some thinking. We'll do. We'll get to Firefest later. All right. So Max, do you feel confident in this game? Jalen Hurts does not look like himself. What that is? Okay, okay, All right, okay Max, okay. You, you have to admit he was Answer tender. The he had a tender little knee. <laughs> Answer the question. Do, do we have to do the player of the week thing again? He had a tender little knee. Listen, do we have to he do looked this player good. Player of the week thing again. He looked good throwing the ball, but he doesn't have the same pop running it. He couldn't even get the brother, brotherly shove last week. Correct. He d- does not look the same, but his sa- his not the same is still an elite quarterback. He, he might won, be even better. He won player of the week last week. Yeah. So, so you like, just you said can't... he doesn't look like himself. But Player like, of the week is a very important trophy. Yeah, I mean it. It just title shows, town even. It just shows the current state of like how that player is playing. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm trying to say. Player of the and week. Jalen and Jalen. Wait, you guys have two player of the weeks right now: Tyrese Maxey and uh, and Jalen Hurts. Title town. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, your basically, trophy closet might wait, be overflowing. Basically, title town. Was Maxey was he player of the month? No, week. We week. just week. <laughs> we do, we're just going week to week. I think AJ Brown was player of the month though. Oh, oh okay. damn. So who whose man's is this? Who's the real leader of the Eagles? You got the player of the month or player of the week? 
well, quarterback. I mean, Jalen Hurts is our leader, but uh, AJ Brown. AJ Brown's the best player, but Jalen Hurts is the leader. Mm-hmm. I do think that as much as Dak owns the Eagles, um, eight and three. Uh, this is back to the similar talk about the Dolphins and the Chiefs. Like I, the Eagles, or sorry, the the Cowboys have beaten some bad teams. And Easiest schedule. They've played a couple good teams, and they looked like dog shit. So I say, if the Cowboys lose this game, frauds. Yeah, we're 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 going to call them frauds. Yep. If the Eagles lose this game and it's close, we're going to say, should you take out the panic button, Max? Mm. You've had you've a big week with buttons. I feel like the panic one might creep into your head. We know you won't press it. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. We'll not. I will not press the panic button. But this is the Cowboys Super Bowl. Was your yeah. mom mad at you? Uh, my mom and I had a nice talk. Okay, good, good. She, it, yeah, I mean, I'm mad at my. I'm mad at myself. Like I like. Yeah, it's it's one yeah, button. It's I know. literally one button. And that's the thing. Like I did. You can ask memes. Everything else was done. I I had done. Like literally every single thing that I need to do for that pot, I just mm-hmm. clicked. I just didn't click the right. No, button. I when it's I called, I don't. Button. I know. When I called I know, memes I know. at seven a.m. He was like, "Oh yeah, Max didn't press the button." He's like, "I'm looking at it right now." Yeah, no, the button never I got don't pressed. Know why I didn't? And I, shout out memes other, by the way. So it was, shout, shout out memes. memes. Thank you so 7 much. Memes. Shout out memes. memes. Thank memes. you, memes. King of the button. Thank you, memes. Thank you, memes. Memes in the gym. Thank you, memes. Memes. Wait, memes published it from the gym? No, he didn't. No, that's. I'm. You know what? I'm going to give memes part of my take player of the week. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Congrats, yep. memes. Um, we finished the show early. I normally four p.m. I know, and I had it done early. I thought it, normally how 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 it goes. We finish it late. I publish it. I wait for it to make sure it goes up on all platforms, and then I send the tweet that it's live. Mm-hmm. And that's my process of like double checking every time. We finished it early. Do you not I've, schedule it when it's done early? Never schedule. Do you know what's fucked up is I actually what? woke up what? in the middle I don't of the trust night. Scheduling, scheduling, I, scheduling is is easier to fuck up than just publishing. I I woke up in the middle of the night. My son came in my room, said he had a spider on his uh, uh, pillow. Liar. Uh, so I woke up, went back to his rooms, like no spiders. You fucking lied to me again. Uh, <laughs> then I it was just like two thirty in the morning. I looked on. Mm-hmm. I I just pulled up my phone. It's two thirty in the morning. I saw the tweet and I saw everything under underneath being like, "There's no podcast." I should have said something then, but I was like, oh, it's probably just uploading it's right processing. now. processing. And then when I woke up at 6.30, no podcast. I, know, I never send that. I never send that. To, I don't see the, the combination. You know, let's save it for Fire Fest. Yeah, Talk yeah, about yeah, the yeah, Eagles yeah, and the Cowboys. Yeah. We'll, we'll have this discussion later. All right, Cowboys, Eagles. Are you, uh, I like the Eagles in this game. Yeah, I, the only thing is that it's the Cowboys Super Bowl. These memes is laughing his ass off They right fucking, now. I love this. The Cowboys love beating the Eagles. Are they wearing Kelly Green? No Kelly Green? No Kelly Green. I, they should have worn Kelly Green. I'm going to bet the over. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Because I, I can't decide. I keep going back. I Don't get me wrong. I think the Eagles are a way better team than the Cowboys. I think the Eagles will go farther. But this is the Cowboys Super Bowl where it's like, okay, they have a, they have a chance to like puff their chests out and yeah. to develop expectations. By the way, how mad do you think Jerry Jones is that the Rangers won the World Series? Oh, yeah. He's furious, oh, yeah. right? He's like, God damn it. Yeah, these bastards. Big time mad. Big time mad. Uh, okay, nerd nugget. The Eagles own the number one ranked rushing defense, sixty six yards per game, and have limited opponents to fewer than a hundred rushing yards in seven of eight games. Their five hundred and twenty four rushing yards allowed are the fewest through eight games in team history. All right, so that guy's got to wait a week to trade Tony Pollard to- for yeah. the wife. Yep. Wait a week. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Maybe you could throw in something else too. He has a lot of incentives, incentives Ooh, already. Maybe what are you TF? thinking, Mr. Positions? I mean, Damn, you don't get freaky on us. <laughs> I don't know. Just saying. Okay. Um, all right, Giants at Raiders. Josh McDaniels has been fired. That happened uh, late at night, and we, we've we talked about it, but Antonio Pierce is now the new head coach. He said, I'm a former player. I touch former players. They're going to feel me. I mm-hmm. need to feel them. I love this. I love this for an interim coach, especially – Big time. Going up against your old team, the Giants. Yeah. So Pierce played for the Giants for a while. Um, I love the interim coach. I was actually hoping that Jeff Saturday would get get the call because, like, just let him be the interim coach for whatever team fires their coach first Yeah, in a season. Did you see RG3 kind of stepped in it because he said that uh, he, he Marshawn Lynch should get an interview for the head coach of the Raiders in the offseason? Yep. And everyone was like, hey, RG3, remember when you said that Jeff Saturday doesn't deserve to be the coach of the Colts? Yep. Yep. Well, he was like, well, I said interview. 
RG3 is uh, <laughs> RG3 has opinions about things. That's he forgets what, his that's, old opinions. That's what I'll say about him. He, yeah. it, you, no one will ever accuse RG3 of not having a, a, a loud, usually incorrect opinion about something. But he goes by the the old saying, like it's better to be first than right. So yes. you have to give him credit. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So we also have a uh, couple couple. So I I, I like Antonio Pierce. Uh, he feels like he's going to light a fire. It also, Josh McDaniels has to be the number one guy. Like, thank God that asshole's gone. Oh, yeah. Like, the 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 relief in that locker room has to be insane. Oh, yeah. And, and now they're going with uh, AOC at quarterback, right? AOC at quarterback. Um, he is the uh, 24th different Raiders quarterback in the last 20 years. And only two quarterbacks of the last 24 years for the Raiders have been profitable in a gambling sense against the spread. And the names will shock you. Raiders quarterbacks. I'm Only gonna... two have been profitable against the spread. In how many? Twenty four years. Trail Pryor. Yes, that was that's a good one. credit that's on that a great one. one. That was a great. That was a good. That's great pull. pull. Um, the next one I'm going to go with Rich Gannon, Jason Campbell. Oh, he was he was going to be my other guest. I mean, what a Damn. what a what a duo. Yeah, because I remember I think the Raiders were like eight and eight with Jason Campbell. Terrell Pryor had one decent year. Yeah, as quarterback. Yeah, the uh, the Raiders. Uh, have had 14 head coaches since Bill Belichick started in New England. Wow. The Raiders also have had 18 head coaches since 1992. I say that because the Steelers have had two in that time. Mm -hmm. It's very funny looking at the Steelers. Like I, I think Nate Tice actually tweeted out that the uh, Raiders have had four head coaches since they moved to Las Vegas and the Steelers have had three head coaches in the last 50 years. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> like, it's that's, insane. that's nuts. And also, Mark Davis, he's currently paying now two head coaches yep. to not coach the team. And he doesn't have the money. He doesn't have the he money. He doesn't have the money. Uh, John Gruden, I think, still has, what, six years left? Yeah. And McDaniels probably has four years left on his deal? Yeah. That's got to be so awesome. I. It is truly my dream to one day be fired as an NFL head coach be great and just make money, not doing shit. Just Apparently there's offset language. So if you have to start, you have to look for a job where you have to like actively be engaged and trying to find a new position. And then that new salary gets offset against what they, the former team owes you. Yeah. So if McDaniels gets hired at like, I don't know, a million dollars a year to coach the commanders next year under Belichick, hypothetically, then that'll hypothetically. be, that'll be $1 million less per year that the Raiders have to pay. But as of right now, Gruden's not working. McDaniel's not working. Mark Davis's highest paid employees are two guys that don't work. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like Barstool Sports. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's a nice setup. Nice setup. Uh the so I love the Raiders in this game because Antonio Pierce feels like it's the perfect uh interim head coach bounce. Except for the fact that uh the guy calling the plays now for the Raiders offensive coordinator, Bo Hard Hardegree. Mm -hmm. Um doesn't mean anything except for one little sentence uh before i read his name he is from the adam gase coaching tree uh oh <laughs> i saw that and i was like no what is the what is the adam gase it's coaching just, tree it's, it's a just dead tree it's a weed <laughs> yeah, what the fuck you if you're Bo, you have to get that like find anyone else to be in their coaching tree that's yeah who else has he coached for who's got to have somebody else right? wait well, let, let, let me look this guy up here bo hard agree bo i might be saying his name wrong but he's got it yeah the adam gase coaching tree he he looks like a mix between adam gase and sean payton he was an offensive assistant for the bears when adam gase had miami dolphins jets patriots duke grad assistant Mm, Duke, so you can work with that maybe. Oh, he was an intern at LSU for a little bit. Yeah, so yeah, be a... 2011, that was uh, Les, Les Miles. Miles. Yeah, he's a Les Miles disciple. Eh. It's way better than Adam <laughs> I Gase. don't know. Maybe uh, Cutcliffe, Duke. Yeah. Cutcliffe is the Mannings. Yep. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, you're a Cutcliffe coaching tree. Yeah, I don't know Adam Gase coaching tree. That's one of those things like... You know when they tell you when you're coming out of college, like if your if your GPA is like under three, don't put it on the resume. Yeah, that's it. when you're when you're in the Adam Gase coaching tree. Leave that off the resume. No, it's it's a Charlie <laughs> Brown Christmas tree of coaching trees. It really. I was like Raiders, 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 and I read that. And I was like, oh no. Well, it's it's funny because we talk about coaching trees and we think that anybody that has a good coaching tree or has one time been a fruit of a good coaching tree is you're essentially hiring that guy. Yeah. to be your head coach. You're different guys. 
but if you're going to say a coaching tree, don't say like the worst person yeah, ever. Adam I Gates. don't want to think about Adam Gase yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. So we did. All right, and Daniel Jones is back. So that's is he, fun. He's officially back. I think he is offic officially back. So we don't get Tommy DeVito this weekend. Yeah, Tommy DeVito. Uh, I did see. It was very funny because Jeff Schwartz, uh, who's uh, very good at at football analysts a analyzing. Uh, he always laughs at the hypotheticals we throw out there where like people it will go it will trend trend on Twitter every now and then like if you had the best offensive line and you had 10 carries how many yards yeah. did you get and there was 50. one the other day that was like if you had the best team ever like could you get 100 yards passing in an NFL game and Jeff Sch Schwartz was just like Tommy DeVito mm -hmm. like we we've proven this mm -hmm. Tommy DeVito. Yep. We, we've proven that these hypotheticals are absurd. Tommy DeVito is probably the best quarterback in his high school's history. Yes. Probably in the state probably at the, the state. time. Well, he was a, I think he was a New Jersey guy. Yeah. Because Billy was saying the other day that he and Tommy grew up together. Oh, yeah. And that the two of them were looked at as being like two of the top Got quarterbacks yeah. in the tri-state area. Young, young so young Tommy guns. DeVito beat out Billy for the four-star or whatever it was rating. Um, basically, what you're looking at is like a much, 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 much better version of Billy football playing in the NFL. And he got with negative two yards. And he got negative two yards. <laughs> so that should put that hypothetical to bed for a while. Although yes. I do think I could. I don't think I would throw an interception. I wouldn't fumble if I ran it. No, I have too much pride to fumble. We've been yeah. through this. It's yeah. like I, the details, you get all the points of contact. I don't. I would not carry the ball like a loaf of bread. I mean, we, I said it last night after the uh, end of the World Series. I, you would, I would never ever make the last out in the world series with my bat on my shoulder you gotta you gotta give it a, a, a good honest chance yeah i'd swing the next day like, i don't care imagine all the guys that are in the dugout watching you at the end of the game do it for them do it take for a them. cut uh, all right nerd nugget the giants raiders game features the two worst offenses in the league with both squads averaging 268 yards per game the Love giants it. are also the only team in the nfl that have not scored at least 100 points this season Oof. And they have 95 Oof. Uh, yeah, I think the Raiders have gone under their team total every single week this year. I don't think they've scored 21 points yet. Have yeah, they? It's crazy. Uh, all right. Second last game, Colts at Panthers, Frank Reich bowl. Yeah. Revenge game. Big time revenge game for Reich. And he's going up against Gus Bradley, who he hired to be the defensive coordinator. So do you think Frank Reich, he doesn't seem like a guy that talks much in general. Um, do you think he's getting his team amped up being like, they didn't want me? Yeah. Cause if he said that to the sure. Panthers, do you think the Panthers would be like, we don't want that's you. pretty it sounds like they're a smart <laughs> yeah. smart run organization yeah what are their can you can you share their phone numbers we want to talk about some stuff yeah uh he might not say that but it's so early on in the season and they just got to win that there might be some guys in the panthers locker room that believe yeah they sure. might be believers sure like uh, let's win this one for coach uh i know the colts defense is really bad they've given up 30 38 39 37 points in the last three games yeah they're one of the worst in the league um, the Panthers on their defensive side, they've got uh, they got a flu going around. Mm. We're on flu watch for the Panthers too. Uh -oh. It's that time of year. Troy Hill was out with the flu. Hayden Hurst, tight end, he was out with the flu this week. So there is there's an illness going around the Panthers locker room this week. <sighs> keep an eye on that. Okay, I'm going to need to keep very close tabs on that. Eye on that in this game for sure. Uh, okay, Nerd Nugget. In their first game since switching the play calling duties, the Panthers averaged 7.6 yards per pass attempt with OC Thomas Brown calling plays in last week's win compared to 5.5 during the first six games with Frank Reich. Okay. So it's progress. Yeah, no, I, I said it last week. Thomas Brown, McVay coaching tree. That is a coaching mm -hmm. tree you want, and uh, they, they looked a little bit better. All right, last game of Sunday, which is the best game, Bills at Bengals. So excited for this game. DeMar Hamlin. That's it. Demar Hamlin. Yeah, uh, they're gonna they're gonna hammer us with Demar. I do think the Bills. Maybe there's a weird thing going on where the Bills are like trying to. Josh Allen's like, I want to play up tempo. I want to play up tempo. Ken Dorsey wants to play with some tight ends. I I feel like they're gonna start playing up tempo. I, I feel hope like they're so. gonna start playing up tempo. I That's so. their best chance. They, their their defense stinks. They have to like basically be like, hey, listen, we gotta play up tempo. We gotta we gotta score a shitload here. Because our defense is not good. Yeah, that's so that's what I've missed about the Bills this year is um, they're not playing in even the games that they lose. They're not playing in shootouts, really. Yeah. And so I want to bring back the shootout Bills. Uh, they did get Lenny. They got Leonard Fournette. Oh, so we got to figure out what we're doing. Lenny. Is it playoff Lenny? Lombardi Lenny? Wingnuts Lenny? Uh, Lenny Mafia? Lenny Mafia. I kind of like Lenny Mafia. Lenny Mafia. Um, he was practicing the other day. He was wearing, he was basically wearing a swimsuit when he was practicing. Love it. Legs look great, Lenny. Great job. Always. You look like you're in good shape. So you can expect, well, he's usually good for like 
Uh, what's a typical Leonard Fournette stat line? I would say it's like 11 carries, well, 42 yards, and a touchdown. Now or back in the day? Because back in the day, it was like 20 carries, 75 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, that was that was like old Lenny. I feel like now... Three carries, three yards, three touchdowns. Oh, no, like three Jerome carries, Bettis. It was three carries, zero yards, three touchdowns. Jerome Bettis. Yeah, yeah. that'd be a great stat line for, for Lenny Mafia. Um, we got fucked last week. We got fucked by the Bengals. Joe Mixon had a baby before the game. Yep, they didn't and tell they us until after. They didn't tell us. They didn't tell us. And then Zach Taylor said on the post game radio show, Joe Mixon has a brand newborn daughter, and it was his best game of the season. We got fucked on that. We did get that fucked. Should be, they should be listed on the injury report. Yep. It's my if, fault. If, I should have dug into that. Well, no, no nobody no, knew. No one knew. No one knew. Did it make it after. public at all? No. no, it wasn't made public. It should be on the injury yeah, report. Crazy. It should yeah. be the NFL should come down fault. on that and be like, Joe Mixon definitely will play, has great sperm. Although. Maybe Jake should be calling every hospital in America. I needed Sunday. I needed to put in more effort. Yeah, no I will excuses. Take the blame. Jake. Yeah, okay. My fault. Um. All right. So, and the Bengals are back. They're back. Like this is a game that if the Bengals win, they're all the way back. Yeah, because fully back. It, it Joe Burrow looks healthy. Everything looks like it's clicking. This I'm so excited for this game. Separation Sunday. It's another must win for the Bengals. The yeah. Bengals only play in must win games. And the Bills. Because they got off to a slow start. You think it's a must win for the Bills? I think it's a must win for the Bills. I think it's a must compete for the Bills. I think it's a must win for both these teams. It's going to be big. Uh, okay, Nerd Nugget. If you're an NFL player listening, please DM me if you're about to have a kid. Yep. Mm -hmm. Actually, but not in a creepy way. Just like every, yeah. every time you have sex, DM Jake Marsh <laughs> if you're an NFL player. Yes. Just yeah. give him, what does Chaps use? The sunglasses emoji? I don't know. Yeah, just DM DM Jake with a sunglasses emoji. You're about to have a kid. When you have sex, unprotected. Yeah. Perfect. Um, this is my nerd nugget of the week. I have one every week that I hype up and try to wow you guys. Okay. Here we go. Wow me. In 20 regular season Sunday night games, the Bengals are 3-17 and 17 overall. Their last Sunday night win came over the Dolphins in 2004. Okay, it's a long time. They are very, very bad. Interesting. Now with NBC, they also have been very, very bad over the last like twenty five years. So they haven't had twenty games though. Twenty games is a big sample size, mm -hmm. but there were some significantly bad Bengals. Teams. Yeah, but you wouldn't mm -hmm. think they would get a prime time spot. They they spot. played they play them on AFC North games. Steelers oh yeah, when, yeah. when it was up. Carson Palmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. So three and seventeen. It has been nineteen years since they've won on Monday night. Sunday night. Okay, okay, that's a good stat. All right, that Thanks. is a good stat. Very cool. Okay. Let's get to our uh, picks. It's brought to you by our friends at Chevy. There's a new family with unstoppable grit, and they're the official partners of the Pardon My Take family, and that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever Silverado Heavy Duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures take you with exclusive Multimatic DSS V dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2 a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head to Chevy.com. Check out the Chevy Silverado and family of Chevy ZR2s. The official trucks of Pardon My Take. Go right now to Chevy.com. If you're not a truck person, you should be a truck person with the Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s. The official trucks of Pardon My Take. Okay, picks. Uh, in the warm-up 15-minute opening act, I am 10-5-1. and one. Max is 8-8. Eight and eight. Memes is 7-9. and nine. Oof. The main event, one hour. On the stage, Big Cat nine five and two, PFT nine and seven, Hank seven eight and one. Ooh. Oh, it's close. About to be Memes halfway. Memes and Hank. Memes and Hank. All right, who goes first? I think it it's PFT because we switched up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And we're that's going right. this way. So yep. I'm next. Yep. All right, PFT, you're up. I am going to go with the Atlanta Falcons minus four. Okay. Falcons minus four Ugh. against the Vikings. Shut up, Hank. Ugh. You don't get to uh, somebody's pick. <laughs> I just did. You're you in did, last place. Oh, That's yeah. a compliment. Ugh. All right. Uh, Jake. I will go with Seahawks Ravens over 44 and a half. <laughs> okay. First place. Max, make sure you press the button to talk. Yep. Uh, I will go with the Eagles. Minus three. Oh, wow. That was the no confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just speaking with no confidence today. Okay. You are. Why would happen? All right. <laughs> Memes. We'll talk about Firefest. Fire Fest. Yeah, we'll talk about Firefest. Memes. Colts, Panthers, over 44. Ooh. Mm. Okay. 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 Hank? I'm going to go with my squad, my boys, the boys, Cowboys. Cowboys mm -hmm. plus, plus three. three. That's ahead. 
Okay, uh, I got two easy ones. But it's not really head my head picks though, are still here. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Bills, Bengals over 49 and a half. And then I will also go with the Browns minus eight. Love the Browns this Against week. the Cardinals. Clayton Toon. And nah. -uh. Hank? I'm going to go to a game with two teams with non existent defenses. One team is banged up, the other team traded away their best guys. Pats, Commanders, Lighthouse Bowl, Battle for the Lighthouse, over 40 and a half. Ooh, okay. spicy. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, but at least, you know. No, I think it's a good gonna pick. We're going to be watching it. Uh, uh, is a good pick. Yeah. When someone says a pick and you say, uh, that's I, good. I was going to take it. So congrats, Hank. Thank you. Okay. Ma memes. I'm going to go Bengals minus two. Okay. That's yeah, the Bills. Okay. Okay. I will take. Has anyone done Commanders Patriots over? Yes, yes. you aren't listening, and okay. you can't press buttons. Are you serious? Is that, <laughs> he just took. Is that Hank real? It. Uh, it was real. Max, you'll actually hear Hank taking that when you edit the podcast and forget to put it out. <laughs> Correct. We basically did a podcast no, on Wednesday just for Max. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not true. Did you like it? Podcast. Did you leave a review? That's not, that's not true. You should have that's to review. True. You should have to leave a five star review okay. on all platforms. I, I will do that. Now the amount I'm of people that said my, they were driving angrily. You can like, look at my shoot. Max. You probably caused car accidents, Max. Me and Max listened to it on the way in um, yesterday. I will go. I will go. I will go. Uh, Sounds like Mike. you're not ready. Rams, Mike. Packers, under. Okay. Rams, Packers, Ugh. under. What do we have? 30, 38 and a half, I believe. Okay. I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers plus two and a half. Uh, at home against the Colts. Okay. Frank Reich's revenge. Okay. I'm going to go with Seahawks Ravens over 44 and a half. Ooh. Okay. I took that. Oh, you yeah. did? That's why I like it. That was your okay. first one? It's okay. Don't worry <laughs> about it. We're doing a great job. <laughs> okay. In that case, I will go. Wait, I should start hooking these up to the monitor so you guys could see it as I type it in next week, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm going Or you to... could check the shared document. Or we could listen. Have. You know yeah, what? Just it's, it's literally uh, two picks a person. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go double down on the Vikings Falcons. I'm gonna take the over 37 and a half points in that game. Oh, too. double down. Double down. I like that. It. Yeah, I like that. Okay, well, we'll tweet out all the picks on Sunday morning from the part of my take Twitter. Let's do some fantasy fuck boys. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? The it's Germans. Xenophil. The Xenophil is love good. Oh, we do it as Germans. No, 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 we're not. Fuck the Germans. Germans. Fuck the Germans. My stardom is Tilted Towers. Tilted Towers. Where we what drop it, fuck? boys. What is that? If you don't know, you fucking don't know me. Oh, Tilted Towers. 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 Tilted I don't know what that is. My cinema is the fucking Someone's lottery ball machine. Me Fuck in. this stupid piece of shit. Fuck, I, I hate why? it. I think it's why? a pretty thing to do. Baseball bat to it and break it. You don't like running numbers? The and thing my, is beautiful. My sleeper, Victor Wembanyama. Oh, uh, he's only tall. Slender man. This, this guy, guy might be, that be okay. Yeah, this guy might be good. He's someone to keep an eye on. He wouldn't be that good if he wasn't that tall. Nah, he's legit. Yeah. Hello. Oh, my name is Hans. 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 My satum. My satum is is Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson. He is playing overseas right now in in the fatherland. And his, ah. it's uh, Robbie Chosen now. I love Chosen guys. I just love I love everything about the guy. Sure, this sure. Is why we didn't do the I, Germans. I, I think he'll be a great player. My system is the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico Finance Department oh. because Darren Ravel. You, you guys know Darren Ravel. Uh, you're losing it. You know Darren. <laughs> Darren Ravel. Da, He's got da. the check. He's got a check that he tweeted out after check, Bobby Knight died. Check. Talk about some bad bookkeeping, yeah? My sleeper, <laughs> my sleeper is the Chiefs because the Chiefs are very tired. 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 Very tired, tired, very tired, tired. sleepy boys tired. On, the, on the Chiefs this week. I think they'll be too tired to play football well, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. More. yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. What's yeah. the news? Nine, nine, oh, yeah. 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 Hello. Hello. Da. My name is Franz. Hello, Franz. Franz, my oh, startum. My startum is possums. Possums. Oh. Possums on the field at Texas Tech. Oh, the possums. The possums. <laughs> the possums. <laughs> My symptom is 
Trademarks. Oh. Trademarks, okay. Uh, Travis Kelsey, trademarked, all right, nah. Da. Ah. <laughs> all Let right me say now. that again. All right, nah. All right, nah. <laughs> That's a trademark. All right, nah. <laughs> all right, we nah. are committing trademark infringement, yeah? Yeah. All right, yeah. All right, nah. My sleeper is Jordan Poole. Oh, he's so good at the he's, ball. He's sleeping. Everyone's sleeping on we Jordan Poole. He's so good at the We go swimming with the ladies. show off the backboard. Jordan yeah. Poole, Kyle oh, we jump guy. in. Throw the ball off the backboard. Doesn't matter that you're sure, down 20. Sure, sure. Vast to freaking. Yeah. Ah. Okay. <laughs> it's fancy German. Someone, yeah. Someone break the ice here. Uh, so I wasn't ready. <laughs> I'd just like to say that um, we were we were on alignment that we were going to do fantasy Germans and then no we said we were going to do fantasy fuckboys yeah. and then I said oh. Z Germans and then we went half and half. You got everything. You got yeah. the access there. Well, listen, it's, there's a lot of German Italians out there. Yeah, they live in Argentina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, za da da. Okay, yeah. let's get to our interviews. We got awesome interviews. Clinton Portis, Tiffany Gomez. Uh, what a combo! What yeah. a combo! Crazy. Never been done before in podcasting history. I can assure you that. Dream blunt rotation. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Before we do that, PFT. Part of my take is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it? Well, therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. I've personally benefited from therapy. I think a lot of people could. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you can give BetterHelp a try can help you deal with major trauma. It can help you learn positive coping skills. It can help you learn how to set boundaries. It basically empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and it's suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Make your brain your best friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash PMT today. Get 10% off your first month. That's 10% off when you go to BetterHelp dot com slash pmt that's better help h e l p dot com slash pmt and now here's clinton portis okay we now welcome on a very special guest he's bcs national champion two-time pro bowler it is clinton portis in the studio clinton thank you for joining us for coming here appreciate it we both pft and i both like when we were like hey clinton portis name thrown around like yeah we love watching him play ball Cause that you you running the football was the best. Appreciate it, man. You know, thanks for having me. Uh, first off, and I just think the the back position has transitioned so much. You know, uh, a lot of those guys are so talented uh, that teams only highlight it. You know, you just highlight that specialty instead of allowing those guys to become the total package, like force those guys to be three down backs. Uh, everybody is kind of running back by committee. You see a guy jogging on, you know, you make a good play, you're jogging off the field. Like that's, you, you, it's hard to get a rhythm uh, of the game with that style of football. So it, it kind of takes it away. When you look at backs not getting paid, that's the reason why. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you don't get to display an entire body of work, you know. Uh, maybe three backs in the league get 14 or 15 carries a game. That's absurd. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's 15 true. carries a game. What are you, if you average five yards a carry, that's still only 75 Would yards. Would you even take a shower if you ran the ball 10 times? I like, would that's not even a, that's not would, even a game. I would definitely take a shower. I would take, <laughs> I would take a shower if I go outside and sweat. So uh, I would definitely take a shower, but it's hard for a back to just really take over a game and, and dominate. Uh, in that aspect. Yeah. yeah. So I did used to love watching you run the ball, but there was something else that you did that I loved watching more. That was your pass blocking, like in pass protection. You were a dog. You were a fucking beast as a blocker. I remember there was one play. Maybe maybe you can tell me like what game this was from, but um, I think you were chipping somebody. You laid the dude out. And you did a little dance over top of him. You did like a celebration dance. Yeah, that was that was the Giants and. Uh, I think it was Q and Nuka. Mm -hmm. And what actually happened was the play before, I think OC attempted to help me up. And he came and slapped OC's hand, not knowing our relationship, <clears throat> not knowing we were already friends, partners, you know, whatever it is. Uh, he came and slapped OC's hand, like, and, and had comments like, uh, don't help that we can't, mm -hmm. whatever it was. 
And I jump up and we exchange words. And the very next play, like, I see him lined up outside. And I told Chris Samuels prior, I was like, stay inside. And he had this look like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And he just, if you look at his set, it was like, okay, I'm setting, I'm staying inside. I don't know why you're telling me that. And he never saw it. Yeah. Like, he never saw it. To this day, he still don't know what hit him. Do, yeah. Do it horizontal in the air before he hit the ground. Yeah, he still don't know what hit him. Yeah. You know? And it was like that dance was me exchanging those same pleasantries that he shared prior. You know, like, yeah. watch your mouth. You know, you're not ready for this type uh, situation. Yeah, you were one of, one of my favorite players in the world. Uh, so, I really appreciate you coming in. Appreciate it's, it's very man. cool to see it. Um I want to go back real quick to the college days for mm. you. We've had a couple couple guys from the U on the show before, and we always just sit there naming guys that were on that team um, because you had, like, the best roster of all time in college football. But more specifically, your running back room that you were in, probably the best group of positional players in college football history at the time. So can you walk us through what that was like getting on campus, getting all that talent around you, and if you guys knew that you were all different? I would still say to this day, you know, a lot of people uh, look at running back rooms and outside of that Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, you know, what what collective group and they needed a third man. Uh, but outside of Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, you know, what what group of guys had that success on the next level as well? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you look at myself and Willis, we were just shy of 10,000, Frankie G third all the time. That's that's crazy. Yeah, you it know, is. You look at all these other backs, you know, they talk about Alabama and they talk about Georgia. Those guys, you know, probably finished their career with five or 6,000 yards, which is no knock to them. It's just what we had was, was so different just as an entire team because our competition, like I didn't look at my competition – as Frank or Willis, you know, we mm -hmm. were all together and I didn't look at them as my competition. My competition was we got to figure out how we kick Ed Reed ass today. We got to figure out how we kick Philip Buchanan ass today, like Ford, Jonathan yeah. Vim. You know, that was our competition. It was the defense, you know, mm -hmm. and then when you look at the offense, you like, man, Dre over here, Shockey over here, Brian McKinney, you know, Vernon Carey. It was so much work on that team that you didn't – it wasn't like, no, oh, man, I'm looking and this is Frankie G. Like, we sitting here trying to figure out a solution. Like, you know what, dog? Reed tried us yesterday. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fuck Reed up, you know? <laughs> so it was one of those situations that made us all better because in practice, our practices used to be so crazy. And I know everyone says the same thing. Like, our practices were so competitive. Like, if, if I walked up – and one of you guys walked up. I'm like, that's a wasted rep to me. Mm -hmm. Like, move out of the way. Like, or I'm not doing it either. Okay, if I'm you're up, different though. Yeah, like, yeah, I would. I would respectfully like I go low on you. Yeah, but I wouldn't give you that chance because that's what I'm saying. You going low on me, mess around and hurt me. Yeah. So true. I wouldn't even go with you. Like, hey, you know what? Let me get out his way, and I'm gonna go with the the next guy. You know, the guy I'm going against was the Dan Morgan or or the Jonathan Vilma, you know, and I knew Jonathan Vilma was going to be special because the summer that he came, Dan and Nate Webster stayed, sent him Chris Campbell. They didn't want to, you know, it was like, nah, CP up, come here, Vilma, come here. And he just would take that ass, like he would take that ass whooping and step back up. Like, I'm going to get you dog, eventually. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. like it, that, the, uh, the competitive side of him was there. So I knew he was going to be something special, you know, and to go on and see it, it was just like, you took this ass whooping all summer and then you developed that mentality that we had. So now when your sophomore year come up, it's like, now, nah, now you want to be ready. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. How fun was it being on that team? And you're saying like summer practices, you know, you're playing against incredible guys. All these guys are going to the NFL. On game day, were you like, were you guys ever worried? Because you only played a couple close games. It must have been incredible to be on a team like that, knowing we're probably going to dominate and we're going to probably just kick the shit out of you and there's nothing you can do. Well, I think we knew we were going to dominate. You know, and I think it started when Ed Reed came back. Ed Reed came back. Coach Davis left. Uh, Reed came back. 
And that changed our program because the year before we slipped up in Washington and just on some, you know, cockiness. We were too cocky and too arrogant. You know, the, the late great Al Blades, you know, a lot of the guys were just like Washington was going to buy down to us. And they didn't. They came out and hit hit us in the mouth early, and we had to fight to get back in that game. If we would have had 10 more seconds, we win that game. But after that, I think it became a staple, like we're going to fight to the death of us. So that, you know, that 2001 team, we never was worried. You know, yeah. I think we might have had the Boston College game, everybody look at like, oh, well, Boston College was about to win. They were driving – they had been driving most of the game, but kicking field goals. So they were going to have to settle for a field goal again that drive. I don't think they were going to beat us. But the play that uh, Ed made, you know, just solidified that game. And then we went to VTech. That was probably the hard yeah, game Yeah, two-point game, yeah. Because VTech – and what's crazy is we were blowing them out. And then they blocked a the kick. And that crowd got back into the game. It was like 20 to 7. And we, you know, like it's like we rose bowl bound. And all of a sudden they blocked a punt. And that crowd. Beamer ball. What? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's all. That was a beamer special. And it just turned into a game. They hadn't even scored. They blocked that punt. And the crowd went crazy. Like they, it just was like, dang. Like it, it was a fight, which was good for us because once we, once we beat them, Nebraska didn't stand a chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was yeah. a great team. It was yeah. an awesome team. And and your close friend, uh, the, my favorite player to ever watch play football, Sean Taylor, ended up being on uh, that Miami team too. People forget he was recruited. He was the number one running back in the state of Florida. He was like breaking all the records. He got brought in, moved over to safety. I know you guys became real, real close uh, as your careers went on. Um, what kind of guy was Sean Taylor? So what's crazy is like a, a quick story about that. So myself and Philip Buchanan, we used to always watch all of the incoming recruits. You know, we would go out and watch the Frankie G's, the Roscoe Parish, Willis. We were going to their games. Everybody was from South Florida. So we were going to those games to watch them. So when we were watching the incoming crew highlight tape, the one person that we I hadn't heard of was Sean T., so we're getting this quarterback from Gulliver and we're getting another player. But we were hearing about the quarterback. We knew nothing about Sean. Mm-hmm. So now when we're watching the highlight tape and I see Sean jumping over people, running past people, like he was doing crazy stuff way before everyone else. So I get in my feelings like Coach Solinger, like, you know, you talk about Frankie G, you talked about Willis. Why hadn't you said anything about Sean? He was like, that kid wants to play safety. He doesn't even want to play running back. And it was like a, whoo, like, <laughs> damn, like, you know, like, I'm glad. Yeah. And, you know, once Sean came in and, and Ed Reed was already our all-world safety. So then you add Sean and Antrell Rowe, Kelly Jennings. Like, it's so many names on that roster that guys forgot about that were key contributors, you know. Um, but Sean, man, to to get him, once I got to Washington, every day, you know, we were talking about and discussing they were going to take Kellen Winslow, which would have been a great addition for our team to pick our offense up, you know. And Coach Gibbs was like, yeah, man, I got to get you some help on the offensive side of the ball. And our conversation went this simple. He was like, I got to get you some help on, on the offensive side of the ball. I said, Coach, you want to help me on the offensive? offensive side of the ball he said yeah I got to get you some help I said well good draft Sean because he's going to get us the ball back and that's going to give me more I like that he said do you really think this kid is this good I said listen if you don't if you don't draft this kid we're going to regret it and I was a a teammate of Kellen Winslow who was awesome as well but I played with Shockey so Shockey was that deal Mm -hmm. you know like Shockey was Kellen was more animated and, you know, about me compared to Shockey, like Shockey, I remember Butch Davis asking Shockey because he had been jumping off sides like, uh, Jeremy Shockey, what can I do to get you to stay on side? And, and, you know, he was like, go on fucking first sound and set back down. And the entire locker room looked just like you all. Like, did Shockey just say that to Coach Davis? So, yeah. you know, playing with Shockey, I knew I knew Kellen was really talented. I just felt like 
Sean was what we needed in DC. And in draft day, I'm calling, calling, calling. And finally they called me back and was like, so do you really think we should take Sean? And I was like, dog, that's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. And when that, that Sean T popped across the bottom of the screen, it was up, That's you know, awesome. from that point on. It That's was up. awesome. He would, he would, he was a ball hawk. He would intercept he was crazy everything. passes. He would, he would hit you so hard you would not want to run across the middle of the field. I've never seen a player like Sean Taylor before, where he will affect a game and have every wide receiver that's running anywhere close to a hash mark, just put their hands Alligator down arms. and look around yeah. for him. It's like, fuck, it's, where's Sean? And you, it's crazy because you're thinking of, bro, I think T.O. is one of the best receivers of all time. Like, I would say T.O. is top three receivers of all time. Of all time. Sean, the way, the, the personal problem that he had was with T.O., to punish T.O. every time mm -hmm. he ran a route. If you go back and look, I think we got flagged maybe the Eagles game. T.O. ran an out route, or maybe he was in Dallas. T.O. ran an out route on the far sideline, on Dallas sideline, and the play came to our sideline. They ran the ball to our sideline. <coughs> Sean went and hit T.O. out of bounds <laughs> on Dallas sideline. Yeah. Like, we got a 15 yard penalty because on he the opposite just wanted, side of the yeah, field. He, yeah, like he wanted to make T.O. know. And I think that was the same game that T.O. had the Gator arms where he was wide open and Sean had been after him for so long that if he just stick his hands out, <laughs> it's a 70 yard touchdown. Yeah. But knowing those, those footsteps, because Sean had bit and, and, and blew the coverage and you know, they didn't even complete it. So That's incredible. Just to have that effect. You know, even I remember him playing Randy Moss. Like, I remember us going to Green Bay and playing single high safety against Brett Favre. And he getting sideline to sideline. Like, he covering the entire field. And I think he should have had four or five interceptions, you know. Yeah. So, he was just, like, he was a different breed. He was a different character. We're going to get back to Clinton Portis in a second. Before we do, he's brought to you by... McDonald's. That's right. McDonald's just so good dropped in here. two sauces. It does smell great in here. They've got two brand new sauces, sweet and spicy jam and mambo sauce. It's exciting, right? I love the mambo sauce. Very exciting. It's my favorite sauce in the entire fast food world. Sweet and spicy jam goes great with breakfast. I would put it on a uh, McGriddle, a sausage mm. McGriddle. That sounds pretty good, right? Hank's mac and some fries. How do you like those fries, Hank? Take some sweet and spicy sauce with that. Have some. It's available for a limited time at participating locations. What's your favorite menu item at McDonald's? Big Cat. Mm. Nuggets. Max. Press the button to talk. Uh, McChicken. I was between the McChicken and McDouble. I'll go McChicken. Okay. They're all good. All right. Here we go. I, I like Real a good old-fashioned Big Mac. Sweet and spicy jam. Sauce review. That's good. That's the best. Oh, it's the best. Man, that's the that's ranking. The best. It's that's the, the best. best. I'm gonna have some fries too right that now. That is the best. These sauces are actually legit. I love the mambo sauce, sweet and spicy jam. Also very, so good. very good. They're available for a limited time at participating locations. I love McDonald's, I love Mickey D's. Get them with your next order. They're only available for a limited time. Don't miss out. Get some mambo sauce, get some sweet and spicy jam, and really chow down. Love McDonald's, thank you McDonald's. So when you get drafted, cause we love watching uh, the Shanahan system run the football. When you get drafted to Denver, were you like, this is incredible? Because it's it really did feel like for the stretch, even now with Kyle, like they just make running backs great. You just, you know, one, what was it like running in that system compared Man, to every other system? You know, it's crazy. I walked out of, I walked out of my draft meeting at Indy uh, at Combine with the Broncos. They had Mike Anderson, Orlando's Gary, Terrell Davis, Karan Coleman. They had four backs on their roster. Three of them had a thousand yards. So when I went in to meet with them, I'm like, man, it, it was midnight. You know, that was a long day. I'm like, man, y'all, you all not drafting me. Like, why am I even in here? And he was like, are you tired? Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm tired. Like, I've been, I'm, you know, it was kind of annoying. Like, this a wasted, this a wasted meeting. Um, and then it, it it turns into the team that drafts me. So on pro day, I mean on draft day when they call. It was just like one of those shocks. Like I didn't know who drafted me because I wasn't watching the draft. After after Carolina took uh, Deshaun Foster with the second pick, 
in the uh, second round, I was over it. Like, every team is going to pay. You yeah. know? Like, I left my draft party. Like, you know what? They're going to pay, and they're going to regret this. So I was on my way to Tallahassee when I got the call. I didn't know what round I went in. I, I didn't know anything. I just – it popped up on my phone, Aurora, Colorado. I'm like, yeah, hello. Like, hey, Clinton, we just, you know, wanted to welcome you, let you know we turned your name in, want to put you on the phone with Coach Shanahan. I'm like, all right, you know, thanks, whatever. Me and Coach Shanahan have a conversation. Like, congratulations, we can't believe you were there. You were our top back on the board. We can't believe you fell to us. I'm like, well, why you didn't draft me in the first round? Then? <laughs> you yeah. know, and he's like, kid, just be happy we drafted you. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you won't regret this. Like, I'll win rookie of the year. I promise you. And he's like, man, don't worry about the accolades. Like, just come be the best you that you can be. And I'm like, coach, you won't regret this, you know. Yeah. And it, it ended up being a blessing in disguise because you look at William Green went to Cleveland. T.J. Duckett went to Atlanta. Deshaun uh, Foster went to Carolina. Combined, I ended up with more yards than all of them, more touchdowns than all of them, more knockouts than all of them. Yep. Like, all three of them combined, I my stats were better in, in every phase. And it was just like one of those personal issues my first two years where I felt like I needed to punish everyone and make them know my name. And you did. Yeah. Rookie of the year, 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns. Like, that was – I mean, it was great, but – Something about that Shanahan offense, too. It's just like running backs just are featured in a way that it's just beautiful to watch. Well, I think it gives you – it gives you in, – in Bobby T, uh, who was one of my favorite coaches, Bobby T and Don Solinger, uh, two of my running backs coaches, two of the greats of all time, uh, those guys put you in position to win. You know, uh, I remember Coach Solinger, hey – Listen, every back I got can run the ball. How do you? How are you going to differentiate? You know, every back that I got in here can run the ball. I can put anybody in to run the ball. You know, so that's what made us learn how to block at Miami. And then when you got to the NFL, Bobby T would always tell you, like, man, you're getting my ass chewed off. Like, everything was an issue. You could never satisfy Bobby T. But he was going to do everything he possibly can to have you prepared for the game. And all of that dancing in the backfield, if you look at any of the backs that come out of that system, it's no dancing and reversing field mm -hmm. and doing – You, hey, man, you got one cut downhill. Yep. It's like it's going to go ground, one, two, go. three, everybody going to disappear. And that's just the way the O-line was. You know, that's the way the system was set up. And then you had guys – that were doing the extra, the Shannon Sharps, the Rod Smiths, the Eddie Max. Like, that was a blessing for me to be around those guys because they knew how to win, and they won as a team. So that ego was out of the door. Yeah. yeah. Was it was it an adjustment at all, learning that one-cut system, like put your foot in the ground? You have to – I would imagine you have to see blocks develop in a different way in that system than – it. It one. wasn't really – it wasn't really an adjustment to me because – if you look at, I, I think I played nine years. I had seven different offense coordinators, mm -hmm. you know. So every year I was adjusting, and people don't people don't have that discussion. But from from college, you know, uh, it was just one of those. Your first read is the most important, and if you stay on your first read, you get to the point that your first read gets you to, and that's where you make your move. Like, yeah. don't you do anything prior to stepping on this point, and. Yeah. I think in that system, that was so great because once you got there, you had free reign to do anything, but you had to get to that point first. And, you know, being being that I helped with backs, uh, teaching young backs, that's what I try to get them. This play is designed to get you here without being touched. Now, once you get here, you got to turn to a playmaker. Yeah. You know? So then you go to uh, you go to D.C., Joe Gibbs comes back. Uh, your very first play – from the line of scrimmage or your first carry against the Bucks, right? Counter tray to the house. When you were going, when you were back on the Redskins, I think a lot of people were like, uh, maybe Joe Gibbs will see if his coaching philosophy and systems can translate to the modern game. That offseason, when he's installing that like counter tray based running offense, all that shit, was there a part of you that was like, this seems like some old school football? I don't know if it's going to work. Or were you, were you guys all like bought in from the start? We just bought in, you know. And, and Coach Gibbs is my favorite coach. You know, I played I played for some great guys. I think Coach Shanahan was a great coach, but Coach Gibbs, man, just everything about Coach Gibbs was winner. You know, the way he carried himself, 
who he is as a person, the way he lives life, like it was a winner. So when you're talking to a winner, when you're talking to a guy who's won in everything, like Coach Gibbs was an open book, like my favorite coach by far, still converse with him, still call and check on him. Uh, Coach Gibbs, it was just that, like whatever you need me to do, you mm -hmm. know, like you want me to jump, enter the stadium from jumping out of an airplane, coach, although I'm scared shitless, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, like <laughs> that's the relationship that coach Gibbs brought out of a lot of the guys. And he doesn't know? cuss, right? You Don't, ever hear he, him cuss? He doesn't curse. Like he's never just even like when he's really mad. No, nah, he got the rich. Like, <laughs> and he would get, he would get really red and it would be like, he's pointing at his chin <laughs> and kind of shaking. So that was the curse word. Yeah. You know, I got the reds. Is yeah, that what you said? That was, you gotta have the reds. You know, and <laughs> he'd be like, yeah, like I got the reds, you know, whatever it was. So, um, but, but that was just Coach Gibbs, man. He yeah. had a way to affect you. It didn't take cursing. It didn't take, like, it was just, I'm going to allow you to be you. Just do it full speed. Mm -hmm. So you uh, were eccentric when you were playing. You had the costumes. Do you have any different characters that you look back on and be like, oh, that one sucked, or I love that one? Because you had everything. You know, Reverend going to change, dollar what, bill. What's crazy is those costumes playing around because I wasn't practicing a lot. So we were doing that prior to the media catching us. I had been doing it just playing around and walk through with my teammates because mm -hmm. the energy was low. So, you know, our old line thought I was fucked up. Like they thought I was screwed up in the oh, head. Oh, I thought you were fucked up in the head. Yeah, like they I thought, loved it. They thought I was screwed up in the head. Like they were like, What is wrong with this guy? You know, like and then what's crazy is if you, I think maybe two weeks or three weeks, you see the entire team participate. You see the Chris Cooley, the Rock Cartwright, uh, uh, Brandon Lloyd, like Devin Thomas. You see the entire team. Uh, I think it was Bro Sweets. Mm -hmm. And every, I had like seven or eight of my teammates participating with me. And I think that's the game that everyone bought in. Yeah. And it changed our culture. Yeah. You know, like, it changed our locker room. Everybody bought in. And then from that point on, it was like every player, his wife or his kid or somebody in his family sent a wig or sent some glasses or, or had, you know, some input on it. And keeping for it me, loose. it was just yeah. like, yeah, it, it was keeping it loose. And, you know, we had a, a win streak going and the guys started to buy in and it just turned into like it fed, it fed the city, you know. Yeah. Um, who, who was your favorite character that you did? I would I would say Bro Sweets, and the reason I would say Bro Sweets is because everybody was there, and I wasn't gonna do it. Like I didn't come with God, like I didn't come with glasses or a wig or anything. I was done. I only had like three or four costumes, and I was out. Mm -hmm. And you know, I show up, I show up to practice in the parking lot. I'm thinking. Somebody got traded, like something crazy happened. CNN, like all of these big trucks were sitting in the parking lot. Like, man, what's going on? Like, what happened? You know, and I come in and I'm like, like, what happened? You know, I'm I'm looking for Miss BJ, but it's early morning. Like, man, like who in the hell I got traded or who got in trouble? And when I finally find somebody with an answer, they was like, oh, no, that's the media. They're here for your costume. And I'm like, I don't even have a costume. And they were like, what? I'm like, I don't have no costume. Like, I'm not doing that today. And they were like, no, what do you need? Like, we got to do it. And I'm like, bro, whatever y'all go get, like, I'll I'll be creative enough to do something with it. And they went and got so much stuff. That's why everybody was able to be in mm -hmm. costume uh, that third week. So I would say bro sweet. That's would awesome. you get into character? I remember Sheriff going to get you. That was my favorite one that you did. Yeah. When I look back, you know, if someone sent me the clip, and I look back, I often laugh, like, what what was I thinking? You know, like, <laughs> what was I thinking? That's you know, great. what was I going through? What was I dealing with? But <laughs> I can remember all of those times, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did the um, uh, the Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. And that was one of my, my favorites because everyone who knew me, like, I was always quoting Napoleon Dynamite and doing – crazy stuff in the room so mm -hmm. uh when when we did that like i remember 
uh, talking to Randall L and maybe Mike Sellers in, in Santana, like messing with them. Like, yeah, I taught them this. So uh, it, it was a good time. You know, I can, I can recall the memories, like each costume, I can kind of recall like that environment that day. Yeah, yeah. Coach Janky Spanky. There were some good ones. There were yeah, some real good, good ones. Good times, man. Do you remember in, I think it was 2008, Chris Cooley, your teammate, uh, when he posted a picture of his penis online. <laughs> you remember that? I do. That was like the beginning of online. Yeah. And coach, like, I remember coach was so like, like, what is wrong with Chris Cooley? <laughs> like, I remember Coach Gibbs calling me to talk to Chris Cooley. Like, hey, Clint, have you talked to Chris? Is everything okay? I'm like, coach, he's perfectly fine. Like. And on his folder, and this is what people don't know, the picture that he posted, mm -hmm. like he was drawing balls in like cocks on his folders <laughs> and turning them into Coach Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> like no one ever talked about that, but he was like, that was all over his folder. Yeah. And he was turning it into Coach Gibbs. And Coach Gibbs thought like, this kid is like this kid is off his rock. Yeah, he. I think he was. It was for like his own blog that he was doing. Yeah. And he he was like in his hotel room. He took a picture of his playbook to be like, look, I'm up all night studying, and his tiny little penis was just like poking in the bottom <laughs> of the picture. <laughs> it's like, dude, you didn't look at this before before you put it on your own blog. Hey, yeah. Cooley, was, Cooley is crazy. Cooley was one of my favorite teammates. So. Yeah, uh, good dude. Dumb question. I always love the visor look on a running back. Was there ever a time when you like couldn't when you would tint it and you'd be like I can't even see but this looks cool because no, like when you play Madden it's like first thing you do tint the visor. It you know it it I never had that issue. When it stopped being cool was the NFL when they started finding me. Really? Every, oh yeah, those fines started. I mean, you know it was like when it was a five thousand dollar fine. You were like oh well like I'm gonna wear this for five thousand and then it started doubling and tripling and. You know, I think the Eagles game when when me and Sean came out with the candy cane and you know the different the different uh, shoes, the soccer cleats, and he he had his face mask uh, taped up. I think they find us like like seventy k. Yeah, you know that's and significant. That's, yeah, yeah, that's when it was like, man, this shit's not worth it. You know, uh, but those fines just started adding up. You like. Okay, it's five grand, like cool, whatever. But once it once they hit us for the big lick, I was like, Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. And then that following week, the uh the refs, as soon as I walked out of the tunnel, like stopped me and was like, Any infraction, you're out of here. And I'm just like, What are you talking about? And they were like, Any infraction. Like they checked my socks, they Jeez. checked my shoes, my gloves had to be the same, like my visor, they were like, Any infraction, you're gone. That's yeah. insane. But you looked awesome in that yeah, game. Yeah, the visor is worth it. Awesome look. They yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a good look for that game. Yeah. It's also insane that they would throw you out of a game if your socks were like the wrong height. But what's crazy is they adopted that. That my cars, my cleats. Yeah. I was the first one with the gold bottoms and all of that. Then they found a way to yeah. Capitalize. Yeah. To monetize. Yeah, that's yeah. how they yeah, do they it. They found a way to monetize. It also yeah. means that you've probably saved a lot of lives because there's all this my cause, my cleats, people raising money for charity. Now it's a charity thing that would not exist if it wasn't for Clinton Portis. Yeah. You're a hero. Yeah. And all the fines, I, I I probably paid for a lot of those charities from the beginning. <laughs> you know, uh, I promise you I paid for a lot of those charities. But I think it's a great cause now. It's just how you monetize it, you know, yeah. when the the individuality of a player you took away you yeah know? so uh, this is a maybe a dumb question hard question but when you're a running back and you're getting later on in your career what's the first thing uh, where you're like oh shit I'm old like what is it is it the burst is it you know the power is it like what what was the first time when you're like oh this isn't this isn't me being 21 years old anymore this feels different. I don't. I don't even think I got to that feeling. I think for me it was the politics. Oh, when you start re like realizing and recognizing the politics of the game. Yeah, you know, like, and and it happened for me on the sideline. We were playing the Steelers, uh, two thousand eight, I think. And for me, the incentive was it was going to be the fastest I ever got to a thousand yards. And I was leading the NFL. I think I had like 980-something yards rushing. So it's like my incentive is 
I'm coming out of week eight and I'm already at a thousand yards. Like it's up, you know, like for me, that was the incentive and it was taken the wrong way. I'm telling the coach, like run the ball because I got this. Like I'm going to get these right. yards. You're getting yards every time. Me, right. But it wasn't acting selfishly like, hey, let's run the ball. It was kind of I'm in my bag. I know they can't stop me. So mm -hmm. giving me the ball, you know, right. and we had a blow up on the sideline and it just kind of changed. Like he felt like I was being like, I'm not worried about your stats. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, at, you're averaging four over four yards a carry. Yeah. That's the first down every you're time. You're not worried about stats. Like I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to get whatever I need to get done. Then I'm going to lead this team. And I think after that conversation, it kind of went the wrong way. And we had a bye week. We came back and we played Dallas. And, you know, we had this this crazy, we're going to throw the ball against the Marcus Ware. Like, that's a bad idea, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and any time I could tell uh, if we were going to win or lose against Dallas, just contingent upon the game plan. If it was pass heavy, they're going to win. If it was run heavy, we were going to win, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it was one of those three-week stretches where I went from leading the league in the NFL to three weeks or four weeks later, I probably had gained 100 yards because me and the coach had a rift on the sideline where he felt like I was being selfish. So I think it was at that point, I'm like, yeah, man, this uh, – I'm over this. Yeah. yeah, I think we were what six and two at the time. We were we definitely were, six and two. We were really good. We were six and two, and then and, shit fell completely apart. And that's the reason it fell apart. I and didn't, people yeah. never talk about that, but that's the reason it fell apart. It was like four weeks that it was some internal stuff going on that people didn't know about that just separated that team because at six and two we were playing really good football, and then it got to the point like, okay, I'm going to show you. I'm the coach. We're not running the ball. This isn't about you. And then yeah. we lose three games in a row. Yeah. Yeah. You know? it's, uh, yeah. Is it okay that I say we? I always think about that. If I'm talking yeah. to a player like – Is we. If is you it were, we if I'm, you if went I'm a through, fan? You went through it with us, man. I was with you. I was with you yeah, that whole time. You went through it with us, man. I, so in the transition between Gibbs, he leaves the team. They're trying to figure out who to hire as next coach. This was maybe the weirdest coaching search of all time that the Redskins went through. We hired Jim Zorn, the offensive coordinator, right? He was a quarterback's coach. We brought him in as an OC. Then everyone was like, oh, we're going to hire Fossil from the, he used to coach for the Giants. He's going to be the next head coach. Things kind of went sideways with that for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe you can explain that. But then Snyder says, okay, we're just going to, you know what? Zorn's going to be the head coach now. I know he's never called plays before. <coughs> he's never been a head coach before. But I believe in this guy. He's going to be the head coach. As a player on that team, when you're going through that process, do you just sit back and be like, can somebody explain to me the logic behind this? Oh, um, you got me speechless, and, <laughs> and that's rare. I think as a player, we wanted, we wanted Coach Williams. Everybody wanted Greg Williams. Yeah, uh, Dr. To, Heat. To, to be the coach, you know. Uh, and if Greg Williams takes over that team, I honestly think – within those years because that team was so put together from Coach Gibbs and Coach Williams' philosophy was kind of that hard nose, just like Coach Gibbs. I think we had an opportunity for more playoffs and possibly to make a run with the team built the way that it was. Mm -hmm. And then once you switched to the new guy, it was downhill because – that shift of being tough, that shift of being a red skin, which Coach Gibbs had that toughness, you know, which Coach Gibbs had built, disappeared that quick. You know, it was like, let's go another direction. You know, I don't want to be the tough. We're going to be finesse. We're going to be, you know, and we got, we went from tough to soft. And the faces and voices changed so quickly that, the direction was lost, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for for a bunch of the guys that I would say were the leaders that were the the blood, sweat, and tears, you kind of wanted to silence them and go in a different direction. And when you went in that direction, it lost the team because those guys didn't have the respect 
of the hard nose. So mm-hmm. the people who landed on the line, you know, were kind of like, you're landing on the line, but you're not my guy. Mm-hmm. And this is my guy. And you like, that that guy is soft. Like that guy is, <laughs> you know, garbage. Yeah. But it it was one of those situations. And you know, in 08, after after the season, we went to San Francisco. We finished the season in San Fran, New Year's. I asked to be traded. You know, it, it that never got out. But I tried to leave. I'm like, just trade me. You know, like get me out of here because this is going this is going in the wrong direction, you know, uh, from from Coach Gibbs to missing uh, Greg Williams to the direction we went in. In that six to eight months, it changed everything. Mm-hmm. We love Dr. Heat. We love Greg Williams on yes. the show. Big um, time. When In practice, would he just – would he fuck up the offensive game plan because he just blitz everybody all the time? Oh, he was arrogant. But that was a good thing because that, that made us competitive, yeah. you know. Uh, when when those guys, you never knew what he was going to do, and then you had craziness like Marcus Washington and Sean and Antonio Pierce. Like, you had these guys who were just like his – like, this is heat-seeking muscle. You yeah. Know? And it's a guy that you respect. You know, Marcus Washington coming off the end, full speed, disrupting. What are you going to say to that? That's the way he play. Yeah. A Sean T. Blitzing – what are you going to say? That's the way he plays. So it's not like he's doing this, you know, as a practice player. It's like, okay, let me buckle my shit up. Like, they own one today. Iron you know? Iron. So yeah. Yeah, it, it was more of that. And once you once you lost that and you started to see the politics, like, everybody going to ask for Greg, and this is what you give us? Yeah. Like, do you really want to win? You yeah. know, it, it was a lot of questions. Who's your favorite back right now to watch? <clears throat> Uh, of course, it's hard not to say Christian McCaffrey yeah. because I know the system that he's in. But I think those backs in Miami, which, I mean, that's you know, from the tree. Mostert, yeah, yeah that, that kid, A-Chain, when he comes back, that that separates Miami. You know, that gives them another dimension. Um, but I, I like guys like that. I love guys who can hit the home run from anywhere. You know, you look at Brees Hall, I don't think he get enough opportunity, but – when he puts the ball in his hand, he's out. Mm-hmm. Like it's a big play waiting to happen. I think ETN is getting into his bag as well. You know, I, I've been watching him lately, and I think he's growing as a running back. So uh, I love the young guy, like the explosive guy that can take it the distance from anywhere because you're not getting that opportunity. You know, you look at Derrick Henry, who's you know was getting twenty to twenty five touches a game. His touches are down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's not having the same effect on the game, but your quarterback is house uh, not house back is uh what's quarterback name? Oh, Will Tannehill Levis. or Will Levis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, your your quarterback is Tannehill and you're throwing the ball 40 or 50 times a game. That's not adding up. Like I got Derrick Hen- Henry and I got Tannehill. Mm-hmm. And I'm letting Tannehill showcase his talent. It's something wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you mentioned Antonio Pierce. He's now the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. That's kind of wild that he got to install his interim. Well, how do you think he's going to be as a as a coach? I think he's going to be great. You know what? What's crazy is AP entire career has been crazy. So AP was the special teams guy for the Redskins, and he was he was a a key contributor in our run. You know. And everybody loved him. Like he was, he was big on our team. And you know, he was about to sign a deal with the Redskins to stay in town. I think we had like six weeks left, four to six weeks left, and they had offered him like, like two million. And he come down and says everybody knew he was negotiating. You know, he came downstairs with his head down. It was like the last day of negotiations, and he was about to sign for like two point five. And he, you know, like he was sad, like, man, they lowballing me, but I'm finna sign it. And I'm like, who your agent? You know, and he was like, whatever his agent name was. I'm like, man, I'm gonna call my agent. And my agent was Drew Rosenhaus. I called Drew. I'm like, Drew, man, we got this kid, Ape, like Antonio Pierce. He's really good. They're lowballing him. Like, 
he his agent really not helping, you should talk to him. And, you know, I introduced them. AP ended up not signing that deal. Shortly after, he goes to New York, becomes a team captain, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, you know, mm-hmm. like – and his career just blossomed after that. So I think AP does well. I wish it was a, a fair opportunity instead of this interim where you're going to go and look for someone else, mm-hmm, you know. Yeah. Um, but it gives him an opportunity to showcase what he's capable of. And if you look at that Giants defense, AP was the one put everybody in space, put mm-hmm. everybody in position to get them guys together, that D-line, the linebacker core, to have everybody where they needed to be. So he's a really smart guy. I think instantly the Raiders' defense improves, but I don't know offensively uh, how much it brings to the table. But if I if I had Devontae Adams in fantasy, I would think that AP is going to get him the ball. Feed him the ball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. has to. Uh, dumb question that I – like to ask some of our uh, professional athletes to come on the show. How cool was it being fast? Because you were really fucking fast. You ran track in high school, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> You're just faster than everyone. Do you ever think about like, man, that was it, awesome when I was so fast? Yeah, it was. But it seemed like back in that day, everybody was fast. It seemed like everybody <laughs> ran track. You know, like I can remember being in a in a race. We were in the uh, in the Big East Championships. And I just looked down the line, and you got Santana Moss, Philip Buchanan, Najee Davenport, Tory Mitchell, myself, and Daryl Jones. It's only eight <laughs> lanes. Yeah. It's only eight lanes. And six of the kids were from the football team. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, I wasn't even the fastest. I think I, I finished fourth. That's crazy. Uh-huh. Like, I finished fourth. Santana, Tory, Philip, and then me. That's mm-hmm. nuts. You know, Do you think it's weird that, that guys don't run track anymore? Yeah, I think it's really weird. And, and the 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 weirdest part about it is that's where all the like that's where that's the fun because all the women are on the track team. Yeah, <laughs> like why wouldn't you? Uh-huh. Why wouldn't you run track? Yeah, you, you don't know? get hit. Yeah, why wouldn't you run track? And it was a way for to get out of workouts for me. Yeah, so it was like. Coach, we got a track meet, man. I can't be in here lifting all these crazy weights. <laughs> he would be like, Port is like, get her. And, you know, eventually let me just go on the track practice and handle my business. I'd be like, Coach, man, all this weight, like, it's slowing me down. You're going to get me burnt. Like, you're going to get me smoked, you know. So it was just one of those. But it, it was so fun because the guys for us, for myself, Tanner, Andre Johnson, like, that gave us a chance to just – get out of Miami, yeah, and really bond. So when we came back to the team, we got more stories. Ed Reed was on the – he was throwing javelin. Like, half our football That's team incredible. was on, on, on the track team. That's the most intimidating track team of all time. Yeah, it has to be. The coach of <laughs> the <laughs> Miami track team is the luckiest person Jesus. on earth. Hey, it's like, I'm just going to invite all these Ed guys Reed's to showing be up. my guys. Yeah. And he's throwing javelin. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's I got to see some tape of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, being fast would be cool. I've never been fast, so. I mean, you lose it. That's that's the thing about it. You're definitely going to get slower as you age. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so give us your Super Bowl pick. Ooh. Who you got this year? Who are your two favorite teams? Oh, I like the Eagles. I think, I think the Eagles in the NFC, they're the most complete team right now, barring uh, any injury, and they have depth. So uh, barring nothing happens to – to Hertz or Brown or Smith, I think the Eagles go NFC. And AFC, if Lamar continues to develop mm. and that defense, you know, it's a new D coordinator, they're getting their stuff together. If that defense hits stride in, in December, January, mm. where they have that identity back of a Baltimore Ravens defense – I think I think the Ravens become tough because the goal is to keep Lamar fresh during the the season. And if you could get him into the playoffs healthy instead of nagging injuries like every other year, I think he brings a different element and dimension to that team. So right now what he what what he's learning to do in keeping himself fresh 
is going to be problems for people down the line. Okay, mm-hmm. good answer. All right, I have one last question, rowback question. Promo code TAKE. You get 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, everything. Rowback.com, promo code TAKE. The most comfortable clothes in the world. Use promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase. Okay, this is a hypothetical. Last question. And we're going to probably talk about it in Firefest, but you've been in a lot of team situations. What do you do if one guy on your team, he's got the easiest job in the world. All he's got to do is, let's say, press a button, and he doesn't press the button, and he fails the whole team. How do you how do you deal with that? You whoop him. Okay. Whoop him. All right. That's All a good right. answer. We'll you whoop, whoop him. him. Yeah, yeah. At, at Miami, that guy would have got whooped. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I like, I like he, that. He yeah. would have got hands and feet put on him. Okay. You know, hands maybe, and feet put yeah. on him. I maybe, like it. Maybe nobody would have known about it. Yeah. But Hit he him in would, the body. Okay. The, 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 next yeah. side, the next side, he'd have pressed that button early. Like, yes. Hold on. Yes. Hold on. Let's get this right. One, two, three, and you want me to press, press it on the button. Three, right? All you gotta do is yeah. press the button. Well, all he, you gotta do is press the button. He would have understood, you know. <laughs> so I think that was the the great thing about Miami D. The discipline came from the players, yeah. not even the coaches. The yep. discipline came from the players, and the you know it it was a bonding moment because you were holding each other accountable. Uh-huh. So yeah. well, we'll all be. of that, all of that, that little sneaky and. Somebody saw you. Yeah. Somebody we'll saw whoop you. Whoop them. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Good Our answer. producer forgot to press the button on Wednesday when the podcast just didn't go out. Put hands and feet on Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. We'll whoop them. All right. Well, Clinton, this has been awesome, man. So much fun. Also, tune in Pro Football Football Show. Clinton was on this week. That's uh, airing on uh, YouTube, 8 o'clock Eastern on Friday night. Uh, awesome time with you today. Yeah. Thanks so much. I know people will be listening to this on Friday, but you're going to stick around for the stream, too. We're going to watch the ball. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll be here. Yeah. Thank Love you it. for winning a playoff game for us. We won a playoff game. <laughs> and that was the last time. That, that was, was the last time. I think Mark Brunel had like 42 yards passing. You had a touchdown. I remember that. Um, that's that's honestly, that's the highlight of my career fandom as a uh, Washington <laughs> Redskin commander. That's so crazy, thank you man, for that Because it, 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 it should have been so much more. I know. Like, I think I honestly think the year that we lost uh, to Seattle, we were up at halftime. Uh, Carlos Rogers missed the yep. missed the pick six, and the onside kick. I think we we recover our onside kick, and we come out throwing the ball from midfield, and they stop us. We go for it on fourth down, and that changes the game. Mm-hmm. You know, if we win that game, I honestly think because we had already played the Bears and the Steelers that year. I, I honestly think that give us a chance at that Detroit Super Bowl. We were running the damn ball. Yeah. That's what we were yeah. doing. All right. Well, thanks so much, Clinton. Appreciate it, man. Hey, no problem. Thanks, man. man. Clinton Portis is brought to you by Rocket Money. Did you find any subscriptions that you forgot about or you've paid twice for and didn't realize it? Well, Rocket Money is a personal finance app. It finds and it cancels your unwanted subscriptions monitors your spending and helps you lower your bills all in one place. With Rocket Money, you can easily cancel the ones you don't want with just the press of a button. No more long hold times. You don't get annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does all the work for you. Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill. Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money also lets you monitor all your expenses in one place, recommends custom budgets based on your past spending, and they'll even send you notifications when you've reached your spending limits. With over 5 million users and counting, Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of 720 bucks a year and $1 billion, with a B, $1 billion in total savings so far. Stop wasting money on things that you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions. Manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash take. That's rocketmoney.com slash take. Rocketmoney.com slash take. And now, here's Tiffany Gomez. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is a part of my take exclusive it is Tiffany Gomez. She is here in studio. You probably remember her. Uh, she did go viral a few months ago, the plane incident, which let's let's we could put that in the past. I mean, who cares about that, mm. right? Oh, was that please. fingers crossed? Please. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah. So I don't uh, even remember. That's why, yeah. I don't yeah. even I don't even remember you're what just, we're talking about. You're just our friend, so we invited right. you to come on the podcast. Oh. Right. So, um, what did you see? You really start off with that? Well, it's a hard question. You start off with a hard question, and then it's you like everything's going to get easy that. off that. Yeah. Wow. I'll, we can okay. start off, and then we'll jump to Big no, Cat's no, no. question. First oh, question, okay. sup? Yeah, <laughs> sup. Sup. 
Uh, just so you know, like uh, I'm kind of like uh, so I got three kids. Like I'm I'm the dad. Like I kind of like Hank's dad. He's the cool guy here. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I'm I'm like the dad of the podcast, but Hank is like our guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to set the stage. Well, Hank kind of runs Barcelona Sports. Yeah. I've heard. He so drives he, an Audi. Okay. He's the guy okay. behind the scenes. Uh-huh. He's the best golfer. He's mm-hmm. he's always on vacation. He's the guy. Yeah, he's I the guy see you you're like know. saving kittens and all sorts of shit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's people, you know, people oh, online yeah. say. Oh, the replies. They, they, yes. they like They're to wild. cast it's me wild. Yes. Yes. It's so wild. Yeah, yes. I drive a Lamborghini. I donate yeah. ch- to charity constantly. Yeah. I'm a charity yeah. addict, all uh, that stuff. All right, so I'll start it easier then. No, I'm kidding. No, we can get to that. All right, so how crazy has your life been? in the last like few months because i would imagine like you know the internet's a weird place you go viral <laughs> and you're like holy shit all these people watch this video this is insane oh man i yeah it was it's been very wild um i don't even know how to explain it honestly there's like no playbook to going viral right no yeah. like i'm just a normal person is contrary to what people think mm-hmm. <laughs> I promise you i'm a pretty normal person and after this all went viral, um, yeah, my life did change. Like, I chilled for a little bit, and people didn't think that because, like, TMZ and all the things. But no, I did. Like, I didn't come out of my house for like over four weeks. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, literally blinds down everything. Like, so all right. So walk us through when it happens. So it happens, and then you go home, and then the next day it goes viral. And are you like, uh, no, nah, that's not that big of a deal. Only a few places have posted it. And then you're like, oh, wait, fuck. This has now become like a meme and everything. Because I, I would imagine it's a very scary feeling. <laughs> that's a funny story. Um, so obviously I leave the airport finally, um, which I did not get arrested. I know everyone thinks I did. Mm-hmm. Don't know how I did it, but I did not get arrested <laughs> And um, I had already left when they like came out with some citation or something. So I didn't refuse to sign anything. Like I just was gone. You left, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like in the Uber calling my mom. I'm like, this is bad. Like, mom, this is bad. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm gonna go viral tomorrow. So you saw the phone so at the time and you were um, like- I just knew what a fool I acted. Like I just knew, like I knew I was going viral. Yeah. And yeah. you know how social media is. Like I'm not dumb to, to realize what's going to happen so that was like a later flight by the time i got home <laughs> i am like literally like a crazy person not literally but searching like american airlines american airlines on tiktok like i'm mm. like i know it's going to come out and i am freaking out inside like talk about anxiety way more anxiety than i had in the moment right yeah. um so anyways yeah we and i got on another flight <laughs> at 6 a.m on Southwest. Mm-hmm. I, successful flight. Successful flight. Um, Wearing the same outfit. Yep. <laughs> did, wait, did you put your hair down at least the next time? No, I can't. <laughs> like my hair's wet. Like the reason why I slick it back like that, people think that's like, oh, she's trying to get no, no. Like that's my lazy fit. Like yeah, yeah you're wet. on an airplane. My hair's wet. Yeah, like I tie it in a bun. Yeah. Like it's long as hell. It takes thirty minutes to blow dry it. Like mm-hmm. I ain't trying to do that every day. Right. So. um yeah, we get there and we're going on a cruise. So you like drop off your bags like immediately. So I can't even change. So the only person that knows what's going on is my mom. And we have like my grandparents, my siblings, everybody's there. On a family cruise. Oh yeah, but I'm the only one on, like I'm on a separate flight. Right, right. Um, I'm meeting them there. So yeah, I like can't even like get a new shirt out of my bag. I'm like, mom, do you have a hat? Like, do you have a beach hat? Like sunglasses, anything. Mm-hmm. But it hadn't gone that, that viral yet. Thank goodness. Um, but that night, I like literally got off of all of social media. Yeah, I smart. deactivated every account, deleted smart. every photo. Mm-hmm. The only photo they can find is like 10 or 12 years old from an old like, they were like, she doesn't look like the same girl. Well, I hope not. That was 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, I mean, so you're not yeah, I got clone. my eyebrows microbladed since then. Sorry. <laughs> you're like, not a clone officially. Because then when the when the apology video came out, Everybody was like, oh, it's a different person. Oh Are you God. a CIA plant? Is this a big op? <laughs> oh, know? my God. Yeah, I'm a fed. I'm CIA. Yeah. I'm, I mean, the conspiracy theories are really good. Yeah, they kind of are. And they, yeah. I mean, they're really entertaining to listen to, but no. Okay. You were saying when it happened, like these, everyone that thinks that this is a different person. Like, have you ever been with a girl? Yeah. Women have right. like a hundred different looks yeah. that Hanks, they can get into. 
Hank's been a lot. A few, well, but not yeah. that. Not, <laughs> not too that, many. Not too many. A, the right amount. A good amount of. The good amount. Uh, he's experienced. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Hank's right. kind of a the daddy. perfect amount. He's a daddy. The perfect amount. Oh uh, my god, I can't. Zaddy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Can. So okay, can I ask again what you saw? Yeah. You know the reason why I probably haven't come out yet because it's like so cringe. Um, I did not see anything. What? I mean, I think y'all knew that. Okay. <laughs> I we honestly had no idea. Yeah. You said you did. No, I did not. The Those media. You said this motherfucker is not real. I said that motherfucker is not, not real. These or okay. The, like apologies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I <laughs> got in a bit of an altercation. It spiraled out of control. It was not my best moment. Mm. I mean, it was actually a horrible moment. It's absolutely mortifying. So Everyone mortifying. has bad moments on planes. Yeah, but mine, you know, 450 million plus people have seen it. Yep. Like, it's, it's that many? Pretty, Jesus. It's a lot of people. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank God people, like, don't think it's me, though. Yeah. yeah I'm cool true. with that. I'm Wait. cool with that. I'm happy if they don't think it's me. So what you're saying is that clip that we all saw, that motherfucker's not real, is not like you thinking that if someone is an alien, it was just the tail end of an argument. It was an expression of speech. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. So yeah. it was just like you had an argument with some guy on the plane, and then as you're leaving, you're like, that motherfucker's not real. Yeah. That's was it like crazy. an armrest? Like you guys are fighting yeah, over the armrest? Yeah, what was the fight over? <sighs> this Overhead space. This is way less crazy, by the way. You're completely vindicated, like because everyone obviously s said they watched the clip and they're like, "Oh, what'd she see? An alien? What'd she see? This?" It's like, no, no, she was just saying that motherfucker's not real. Yeah, I mean, so Daily Mail was like the first to like take it and run with it, and they're like, "She saw a not real person," and I'm like, "They are making me look bad shit." I yeah. Mean, and given I did, like I, <laughs> I did look absolutely crazy, mm -hmm. um, but no, I'm. Just was in my feels, needed to get off that. I was highly distressed. Um, not a good look. It was not a good situation. Yeah. yeah. So was it, it was not a good look. So was it armrest? Guy smelled bad. I was thinking. No, I was seat. actually in the aisle seat, and I like gave up my aisle seat because I'm, as you heard me say, I'm only five two. Um, in my little bratty ass voice. Like, so sorry for that, by the way. So gave up. I was in the middle seat, and it was just. There was just a really bad energy, and I don't want to get into like all the details of that. Just as you know, there's it's ongoing, and yeah, this, yeah. this is probably not the smartest to yeah. get into that. But um, yeah, I, I feel like you're vindicated now because yeah, like it I, really was. Everyone thought like, oh, she saw something. She saw something. She's crazy. <laughs> she's on drugs. I mean, like, I wish no, I did. <laughs> that's just an expression. It would like, be way cooler if I did. Real. Yeah. It'd be way cooler if I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, and now, like people dressing up as you for Halloween. That's crazy. That's kind of that's wild. Was there one in particular that you saw and you're like, that's my favorite? Um, there was actually this little baby that was adorable that mm -hmm. they dressed up. But, you know, there was <laughs> the one girl that like panned to the bunny that yeah. like Dallas TV News put on. And that one was pretty legit. Baby's yeah. always yeah. funny. Yeah, babies, babies always Babies play. are funny. Yeah, yeah, but the baby's like honorable mention for sure. Yeah. Like, so a after this happens and when you see like the first uh, like five, ten minutes of you going viral and you're like, shit, somebody put it out. This is oh. happening. Where, did you like hope that somebody very famous died right then? So then that way people would just focus on that instead of You know of the what? Video? It's so great. There's so many things that happened that it still continued to go viral. Right. And I have no clue why. Like literally the people that shit on a plane. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was the like, diarrhea. I thought, that. I thought that was the that. best thing for you. I was yeah. like, Me too. I, I was like, and we're going to move on. It still didn't go away. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it live. still didn't. Somebody shit on a plane. Yeah. And then. I, I was like, really? Like, don't get me confused with the person that shit on the plane. Like, I just lost my shit. Yeah, <laughs> I got, I got a, I got a theory, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way. I think maybe it, you are attractive. That might have been you, why people, you. people <laughs> like, no, seriously, like the internet is uh, a horny place, and so they're like, oh, attractive woman going crazy. Yeah, I'd rather watch that video than like literal human feces. I mean, and let's be real, like, no pun intended. Um. My voice was just so high pitched. Yeah, yeah. And then people were like that. She doesn't sound the same. Well, thank God I don't yeah. sound like that mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Like who could deal with that? Yeah, so, you, you had a bad moment. It was amplified to like the big. It was like the wrong place at the wrong time. Times a million. It was really right. bad. It seems like it right. was really bad. And so now but everyone has bad moments. Now your really your worst moment like exists as like the internet's focus of who you are as a person. Yeah. So and I, people I, like think I've like been trying to like I've been trying to dodge it honestly. Like yeah. I. You know, I, I put out the apology video because obviously I am really sorry to everybody on the plane. Like, that, I disrupted a lot of people. And that's, 
I travel a lot and that's just really not my character. Um, it was just a wild situation that I was in and I needed, you know, I did need to get off. Um, I just wish I would have done it peacefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not making some outlandish comments. But. Yeah. Well, anyone who's like judging you long term is crazy. They're, they're not real. Those motherfuckers aren't real. Because, like, who doesn't have a bad well, moment? Who cares? And now it's, like, for the longest time, I couldn't laugh about it. Like, right. now it's, like, dude, you were out. You were out there. Yeah. Like, you need to chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to yeah. lean into it at some point. Yeah. yeah. And, well, now it's, like, it is funny now that, like. Yeah, a little time. Yeah, yeah, time's passed. Like, it was embarrassing. Like, I felt really bad for my family. Like, super close with my family. Yeah, you're going on a cruise with them. You can't mm -hmm. be any closer than going on I a fucking a cruise. Fucking yeah, Jesus that's Christ. Christ. Oh this, this is torture. Can you imagine, like, I go viral and I have to get it's on like a cruise ship giving you for, for Disney? <laughs> I am, like, losing my mind. The last thing I want to do is be on that. But it was probably the best thing for my mental health. Yeah, bunch I'm of, sure it yeah. was. A bunch yeah. of people wearing, like, mascot outfits jumping around you. and you're I, tried, supposed to act I tried like... my hardest to get a picture with Minnie Mouse. Like, I tried. Yeah. But she had a line, like, out the door. This should be a warning to everybody. Just never go on a cruise. If you yeah. had never yeah. gone on a cruise, this wouldn't have happened. Uh, exactly. Cruise ships yeah. are like prisons. Exactly. Yeah, don't yeah. do it. Are All your right, parents so like internet literate where they knew what was going on or were you just like, yeah, there's, question, there's, there's, there's this video question. going on. Good question. Good question. Good question. No, Great question. So, Thank you. Oh, well, good question. No, oh. you just a really good question. Um, no, not at all. So my mom, her Facebook profile was public. Yeah, that's oh, how the internet sucks. That's how the first person found me is because my mom's Facebook oh. profile was public. Yeah. I was like, mom. <laughs> What are you doing? And I was like, okay, no, just okay. It's my fault. Like, yeah, totally my fault. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, she just deactivated her account because she she felt so bad. I'm like, mom, it's not your fault. Like, I was the crazy one. Um, but the people who are looking for your mom on Facebook are also the crazy people. Like, we oh, live on the internet. We our job is to be on the internet. Yeah, yeah it sucks. It yep. really does. I mean, it's not very nice. No, it's not means, nice. But. I mean, I have pretty thick skin, but it's it's definitely callous now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if there was a video of somebody that was like looking on their computer for your mom, trying to find your mom, that's a crazier moment. Yeah, I think, way than crazier. Kicked off a plane. Way Thank crazier. You. Thank you. Yeah. Way, Thank way you. crazier. But um Well I mean, Hank, Hank actually was telling us that before. It was but his I point. Think we still like, wanted to like my name didn't get released for so long, which people are like, I don't understand like why people you know, like I said, Dallas News TV, like they they put me on or they put my clip on. And so then I have all these people texting me because I've already deactivated social media. So I have all these people texting me and they're like, oh my God, this is your doppelganger. This is you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah cool. Looks a lot like me. <laughs> cool. I've just been on this Disney cruise. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Literally just played it off and pretend. I was like, yeah, yeah. cool. Never responded to anyone. Yeah. And like it, my real friends, like my really close friends were like, Oh, we could tell by your mannerism. Like, that was <laughs> yeah. Weird. Yeah. And, and then you posted the apology video, which I think was really well done. Mm -hmm. um, and then. It was confusing to a lot of people. It's but... confusing because we want to know what you saw. That yeah. was the whole thing. But you like, didn't see anything. Because you know what? At, deep down inside me, I thought that you, I thought you saw something cool. Yeah. I wish I did. About. I really yeah. did. I mean, who knows? I yeah. wish I did. Yeah. Um, no, I had multiple people like telling me what I should and shouldn't do. You know, you have voices coming at every angle and it's like you got to like clear the noise which i tried and it was like okay who am i you know who am i what do i really want i want to disappear yeah mm -hmm. and i tried and then the travis chapman painting painting came out mm -hmm. of all the not reels yeah yeah so then it's like cool it goes viral again yeah then it chills for a little bit then my name gets released goes viral again yeah so it's like everyone thinks like oh my god i'm seeing this girl again. like i didn't want that right at all it just got pushed on <laughs> no you. i did not want that and so, the internet will get rid of anything if you give it long enough yeah so right it's and like yeah. about i think it. talking yeah. about it yeah. also yeah. helps where it's like if you're trying it. to conceal something then people search harder but if and you're I just like this is what happened yeah. i wasn't Good trying point, to conceal Thank anything you. per se but like i just i'm not an athlete i'm not a celebrity i'm not any of those things so like I didn't know I needed to make a statement. I didn't know I needed to do these things. Like, yes, I'm in marketing, but I'm not in crisis management. I'm not in PR. Like, I I did what I thought was right. right. Mm -hmm. And then it got a lot of backlash. Like, I just, I think no matter what I do, it's probably not going to be right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I can tell you one thing that you did wrong. Um, <laughs> I'll just say, and listen, do. this no, is just I'm, all, I'm all due respect. It. You took that picture of you in your kitchen 
uh, when you oh the feet you yeah. put your feet out there. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't have put your feet. You on know, the I didn't really know the that. fucking horny guys were I like, know. you gave them away for free. No shit, <laughs> I should be making money on that. I know, I blurt them out. I know. God, if I you know. want us to track those guys down, Hank will. He'll fucking. I mean, fight them. I feel like. I should get compensated for something. Well, that's so, why you don't give them away for free. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, Unfortunately, who likes, it is. Who likes feet? I think yeah, a lot of guys. A lot of guys. A lot, there of, are weirdos. A lot of weirdos. Not Hank, uh, but Not there's Hank. a lot of weird guys out there. We actually really have a feet guy here. Uh, it's gross. You could meet him face to face and be I'll like, show why? Him my t- they're pretty no, no, don't, no, he probably, no, he probably yeah, already knows it. He probably zoomed in. Keep hidden. We'll actually blur out your boots that you're wearing right now. We don't want you to give this did, away at all. Did you know when you released that photo? Were you like ten minutes later, like shit? Everyone's no, talking about I had my no, feet. I had no clue. And That's then everyone's so like, "Oh, you're AI, you're AI," and I was like, "What?" Wait, <laughs> I mean, clearly y'all can tell I'm not. Yeah, you're not AI. I mean, but you're real. You're real. I'm not a robot. You're, yeah. You are fucking real. Yeah. Thank you. Can we actually? Can we just get you say like the Miami Dolphins are not fucking real? <laughs> can you say that? Can I just do it in the high pitch voice. No, no, you can so do it. No, no, normal no, normal voice is good. Oh, I'm like, please don't make me bring that no. back. No, no, it's so bad. Your normal voice is outstanding. Yeah, Thank it's a good you. voice. Yes. Thank you. It's much better than the Minnie Mouse. Like everyone thought I was Minnie Mouse for the longest time. Yeah. What am I saying though? I'm the sorry. Miami Dolphins are not fucking real. My the Miami Dolphins are not fucking real. Ooh, okay, I like that's it. Good. I like, I like it. people it. are going to get mad at us for that. Yeah, not, they not will. At you. Yeah, they, they better will. get mad. Not at you. They're going to be happy. I don't need you. any more people mad at me. <laughs> no okay? one's going to get mad at you. <laughs> Please don't. Yeah, people so we, shouldn't be mad at you. They this shouldn't. is crazy. Again, it's like yeah. the worst moment. It happened to be caught on film. You did nothing bad. And then it resonated because you're an attractive woman, and there's a lot of horny weirdos online. Yeah. And so we keep going back to it, but. Yeah, when you were when you were dealing with the aftermath of this, you do work in marketing. Did that like affect your your business life? Did that affect you? Thank God I work for myself. Okay, <laughs> like, good. I I saw some. Oh, she got fired. Oh, um, thank you for letting me know. I fired myself. That was great. You should have fired um, yourself. That would have been a good I PR sh- move. Right? Oh yeah, we have let right? Tiffany go. Yeah, yeah. Due she to the no Tiffany Corp. Yeah, that have, that have been brought to our attention, <laughs> and then you quietly rehire yourself. Yeah. Right? But yeah. what's so crazy is everyone thinks like I'm this marketing genius, which is highly entertaining. But um, I actually do real estate investments. Like, prim- that's like my primary source of income right now. Okay. Yeah, Legit. So yeah. I, d- <laughs> I literally don't. I've done marketing my whole career, um, promotional and e-commerce, but primarily now just real estate. That's sick. Mm-hmm. Hank owns his yeah. own uh, condo that looks overlooks Lake Michigan. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Nice. It's very sick. It's got sick. like a panoramic it's view. Really sick. I think it's on like one of the highest floors in the building. Too. Yeah, it's oh. so dope. Yeah. Well, Thanks. It's yeah. Nice. Yeah. I told you, Hank. Six, nice. six, one. Six feet. Six, yeah. Six one. Yeah. Six, six one. Six, six two. Four. Thanks. Well, I told the whole world I was five two, 120 pounds, but I might be like 125, 28 right now. <laughs> That's fine. We're not counting. I've never lied about my weight. I've never <laughs> lied about never lied about my height. Either. <laughs> we're just How all tall is we're it, real. We're just normal. How tall do you think I am? Mm. Careful. Careful. Be very careful. Careful. You could actually. We this whole <laughs> this interview is, it, could it, turn it, on this. Ten. Oh, yeah, that was no, nice. You nailed it. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. Yeah, That's yeah. fine. I, I was worried you were going to say five nine and short change. How much do you think I weigh? This isn't fair. How Just, much you, I, I mean, won't get hurt. Don't, Hank's, Hank, I'm going to stop saying nice shit about you. No, Hank's being funny. But he is funny. He's Hank's funny so guy. fucking funny. <laughs> I don't know. This is really hard. Like, we fuck know, with like, each other like that, yeah. Hank and I. Like, we're just we're just boys. And he's just like, he's a guy's guy, but a, also a girl's guy. Start, pass, he, pass. Pass. Okay. You pass can say any number. Question. Say any number. It won't hurt my feelings. 205. Oh, my God. That was incredible. Yeah. That's, look I'm at us. so much fatter than that. Look at us. <laughs> That's great. 205 and 510. I love it. I love we're it. We're fucking just killing it we're right killing now it right now yeah. especially hank though i wish we could be half as hank cool as is hank. yeah yeah uh what's the what's the weirdest celebrity that's hollered at you weirdest or I'm, like the best uh both yeah um uh, i mean conor mcgregor reached out okay yeah, yeah i yeah. saw he liked one of your tweets yeah. today no he like or your instagram yeah. like he wasn't trying to get my pants or anything no but no like, he's just saying what up no, he wanted to know what I saw. Oh, no, okay. Like, literally okay. wanted to know the what fuck I saw. Did you see? But yeah. regardless, <laughs> that's funny. Conor McGregor follows me. Like, <laughs> yeah. What the hell? That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is very that's cool. Kind of wild. Have yeah. you got any weird DMs from people? <laughs> <laughs> Dumb question. <laughs> the weirdest. I think we know that. Yes, yeah, I'd or, say so. Or, yeah. Has there been a guy named Jersey Jerry that hit you up about your feet? I don't. Okay. All right. We just know. want to make sure I, he works know, here. So I just wanted to say I wanted to make sure that he's there's, not. Yeah. There's certain things like, I mean, I can't feel it at all. Like, cause it it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually have a full time job, so I can't like, spend my whole time on social media. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. No, that's fair. Hit or miss here and there, and people are like, 
she posts like her page is all over the place. It's the wildest shit. No, I'm just like a normal person. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I do post like random ass shit. Yeah. You should just, you should sprinkle in some like real estate investment opportunities in between the pictures that you put out. Yeah. Let everyone know you're hardworking. Like Hank. Hank works harder than anyone here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I, mean, I have a few rentals, have an office building. Love I, that. Yeah. Hank Love works that. hard, but he also yeah. plays hard. Yeah. He's like vacations he's guy, hard as well. Oh, that's a good thing. He's a yeah. guy's I mean, guy, but he's I work, a softie. I work from wherever. So yeah. I take right. My Same with Hank. And, yeah. yeah. Internet. Are y'all trying to like hook me up with Hank? Here? No, no, no. What? what are we doing? No. What are we doing? Uh-huh. Here? I don't know why they asked me to sit in this interview. No, no, we just love Hank. Oh, I know why they. I, no, listen. Yeah. So, Hank so is Hank, just a catch. Hank's going to be going with us to the to the game this weekend. So it's okay. going to be Iowa Northwestern. Hank's a big Iowa fan, mm-hmm. so I think I feel like we should all root for Iowa this weekend. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like he is an Iowa fan. Well, he's deciding his he's deciding. Big Ten team. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We, we, me and Tiffany already yeah. kind of. We already talked about that. Oh, so you don't even need us here, Hank. We'll leave. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but be... I do need some Iowa gear because I don't have any. Okay, yeah, we can get that's some. Not, we can get some. Hank's got a guy for that. Yep. Easy. He's got a guy for Amazon? everything. It seems yep. like. Yeah, Amazon. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is his guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, why? Why did you decide to now start speaking out? You know, at the end of the day, like it's not necessarily going away. I think it'd probably be a good two years before it truly goes away, and I'll mm-hmm. be a meme for the rest of my life. I get it. I get it. But at this point, it's funny. Like it is funny. It's not funny what the passengers had to go through at all. But it, me and the outlandish shit I said was absolutely funny. Right. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Like, Yeah, it's a great it, attitude. Like, lean into it. It is what it is. I own it. Like, it's embarrassing. My very worst moment caught on camera. But, I mean, it is what it is. I, I, honestly, like like I said, we our lives are on the internet. We live on the internet every single day like joking about it and being like it's funny will make mm-hmm. it go away faster than anything well and like humor is what's gotten me through this whole thing like the first four weeks were i mean first eight weeks really were brutal and you know like i said there's not a playbook for it so it's like how do you how do you deal with it how do you survive it mm-hmm. like that's a different ball game yeah like, media is media is mean yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah, it's and, they had, say, and they 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 don't post they don't post real facts. Well, yeah, the tabloid bullshit. Yeah, yeah. it seems no. like you've got a good support group around you. You got friends. I have, like the best of friends. Yeah. yeah. Like, why did my name not get released? Because my friends are loyal. That's, that's awesome. awesome. That's actually that's like, that cool. reminds me of Hank. Yeah, he's uh, a fucking uh, best friend. We were, we were thinking about like <laughs> after it happened. <laughs> I can't it was, it was <laughs> weird how long it took for your name to get out there, and I I didn't put two and two together. But yeah, you obviously have like an ironclad. Yeah. Group of yeah, friends. and. Even to this day, like, they won't speak on it. Love it. And all my friends, like, you know, there's everybody else. Like, what did you see? What did you see? Not one of my friends asked that. Every single one of my friends was like, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's just, I have badass people in my corner. That's really cool. That does remind me of Hank. So when you... uh, when you flew up here, you obviously you travel a lot, right? So you get I around do. a lot. Do you have to now go like in disguise on a plane, or have you ever fucked with people and you wear the the old outfit and you step on it? No. Like, so oh what God. was so funny is everyone thought I wore the same exact outfit, like when TMZ did their thing. No, I was not in the same exact outfit. Actually, I had a brown tank top on. Mm. My wardrobe is basically black and brown. Guys period. aren't good with details. No. No, but what they didn't see is I had some big old baggy cargo pants on. Yeah. I have some tight jeans, and I sure as hell wasn't showing my midriff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guys are dumb. We think we think when we see a woman on on camera one time, we think they're like a cartoon character. They wear the same outfit every time we see yeah. them. So wait, you're wearing a green. I mean, dress. yeah, but I had a six a.m. flight, so they were like, "Oh, her hair's pulled back." Well, yeah, it was wet. It was soaking wet. Right. You're like, but it's darker. Well, now it's wet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Literally. Again, it's wet. guys don't really understand any of this. Did stuff. TMG just find you? Like, were they you were, expecting them, or were you just like, why the fuck are these people? I think they like they chill out at the like airport. Like, oh, it's okay. not. I mean, it's LAX. Like. Yeah. And that wasn't my first flight. I'd been on multiple others before that. That's that's more mitigating circumstances. Yeah. We've all been there trying to make connecting yeah. flights. And then you no, were... I wasn't connecting there. That was a different trip. Like I had already been to Sedona, Belize, and then L.A. Like, okay, yeah. so you can fly. I can fly. You can yeah, fly. fly. How about, how about this? Fly. Yeah. How, how many fly flights fly? have you taken successfully? Probably sixteen in my whole in life? your whole life. Oh my god, I can't even count. At least like two a month for my whole adult years. Okay, like, so you want to say like five hundred flights at least? Yeah. And you've, you've had one bad flight. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we talk about the four ninety nine? That's, that's yeah. an yeah. incredible run yeah. that you've been on. Yeah. <laughs> You know, That's, like you should reframe it like ninety nine point 
nine, eight percent of flights that you've been on have been completely successful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you look at it like that, it's facts. It's, not too bad. <laughs> it's facts. Um, all right. Well, this has been awesome, Tiffany. Appreciate you coming in. Yeah. Thanks for uh, having me. You're going to watch some football with us tonight, right? I hope so. Uh, do you want to guess our lottery ball machine? No one's gotten it yet. This is a new one. So we, so backstory is I bought a lottery ball machine from China like three years ago. Does it work? At the end of every show. Yeah. At the end of every show, we all guess. We all got it. Uh, Hank got it like a shitload of times. We all got it a ton of times, but now we have a new machine. No one has ever gotten this one. Now I'm nervous. No one's even come close. No one's even come yeah. close. So I just guess a number? Well, Hank's come close because so he's a really a good at it. Hank basically How many, got do it. Do I just guess one number? One number. Hank pretty much got this it. This would be an all-time ago. moment if you got it. No. Go ahead. <laughs> 24. Okay. Let's go. The man with this. And don't be upset because this is kind of like the flights. There's many. We've done this hundreds of times where we don't get it. Mm -hmm. Ah, 91. Oh, 91. 91. Oh, like who would guess 91? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's this is a stupid, stupid guess. It's a stupid machine. Like, this should only I'm be a throwing this machine you know what? We don't, It's I not even that big a thing. part of the show. So let's just sucks. get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. that's horrible. Yeah. We don't use it every day. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Tiffany, thanks so much. Uh, we are Tiffany Gomez fans now. Yeah, oh, we have your you. back. We Ta will tag us in on any yes. fights online that you get into. If anyone goes I after you, I do see you get you get comment or tagged in like everything. Everything you post, so yeah. you respond yeah. to yeah. everything I, you post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so the, sorry. The if you well, have a problem, if you have a problem, you come tell us. Will we all be my bodyguards. We will yeah. absolutely. We'll crack bodyguards. some skulls. Yeah. I'm not kidding. We will well, do it. We internet do it. bodyguards. This is what we do. We do it for our friends. All of our friends. You're now in the circle of trust. Yeah. Your name, Can you please like tell people I'm not like actually back? You're crazy. you're not <laughs> crazy. You've hung it. out here all day. Yeah. You're not crazy. <laughs> you're not. What I'm it, actually functioning. I'm a functioning human most what, of the time. What does Tiffany Gomez do for fun? Ooh, that's a good one. Concerts, sporting events, oh, travel, nice beaches. travel. I love you just listed Hank's favorite activities. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I feel like me and Hank need to be friends. <laughs> I, I, I think so. Yeah, a lot in yeah. common. Yeah, <laughs> All right. sounds like it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Tiffany. We really appreciate it. Thank y'all for having me. Before we get to Firefest, it's sponsored by our friends at Morgan and Morgan. Here's some stats and facts. Did you know that 35% of all fatal accidents occur between 6 p.m. and midnight? People aged 25 to 34 have the highest amount of drivers involved in car crashes. Did you know that people aged 15 to 24 had the highest rate of emergency room visits due to car accidents of all age groups? Did you know that adult American males aged 38 are at 150% bigger likelihood to steer their car into a misplaced pole into a parking lot? Well, if you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. My neck actually hurts a little bit now that I think about it. I might have to give them a call. Morgan Morgan is America's largest injury firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers. With over $15 billion recovered for over 300,000 clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. Morgan & Morgan has been fighting for the people for over 35 years. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy. Entertaining clients is hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. Winning the PMT lotto is hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. Moving to Chicago is hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. The fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R the people.com slash PMT or pound law pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Okay, let's wrap up Firefest of the week. Uh Henry? Yes. Uh my first Firefest is we forgot to mention the new intro song at the beginning of the podcast. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You you were supposed to remind me. I for my we're in Firefest, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh but if you're watching on YouTube, we have a new intro song, absolute banger. Joss mm -hmm. Dix, back in the mix. Yes. Mm -hmm. That rhyme didn't even know it, poet. Uh Damn. he did the theme song for BBT, mm -hmm. him and PFT collabed. Came up with a new song for the YouTube intro, so watch the YouTube and listen. I yeah. honestly think it's it gets anger. stuck in your head. Yeah, it's very, very catchy. Ja, very ja did a great job. We didn't know what to expect. We just sent him like the lyrics, and then he sent them back to us, and it was like, great job, Ja. Knocked out of the park. Uh, my second fire fest is that, you know, this podcast, when it started, one of our big themes was kind of roasting dude perfect, and then a few years ago, we did a documentary review, and you guys kind of came around on them, and I stuck on the like... Do perfect or losers, they're lame, 
train. And now we're dude. I like the purple now hoser. Now we we're have I'm a purple office, hoser guy. Now we're dude. Uh, with, uh, with Cody and Cody. And yeah, we Brody. were smart to switch. Everything got inspected, and I've kind of been going around today, like playing around, being like, I'm just gonna do trick shots all day. Like, yep, I'm you are I dude perfect. Am going to be dude perfect, and the key I've is spent the last ten years shitting on them. But now that I see it, it's in front of me, and I'm able to do it myself. It's like, yeah. No, here you know, it is. Why Hank. not just do some trick shots? Hank. Trick shots are fun. Trick Hank. shots are cool. Here's the spin zone. We're dude perfect, but we fail all the time. Exclusively. Yeah, we here's a promise. We will always edit out the shots that we make. Yeah. N- no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you now have to say that you were wrong. I th- did I not just it's fire fest. That's not what you I said. I just came clean. You just you said you I guys just came clipped, clean. And then I realized there's trick shots. You didn't say I, Henry Lockwood, was wrong. I, Henry Lockwood, was wrong. That dude perfect. No, clip that exactly how it was. I want that clip for social <laughs> My- forever, and I will keep that. Thank you, memes. Make sure I have that. Don't let in the part of the dude perfect. I already asked, I already asked memes. I said I, I need to get a, a compilation of the compliments from the Tiffany interview just so I can have that. No. With no context. No, that compliment? never happened. Wait, that never happened. complimented you? No, that never happened. I thought we did a pretty normal interview. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, I don't remember complimenting Did it work? You. No, I mean, we're chilling. Yeah, we're, um, yeah. we're podcasting. Yeah. It, it, Hank's we're, like, no, I didn't leave you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's 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 midnight. We're podcasting. Yeah, um, did I gas you up? No, dude, I'm sitting here eating pizza with you <laughs> on, a, on a Thursday night. But midnight. It's, it's about the friends we made along the way. Yeah, that's fact. It was all a bit. We don't mean any of it. But I will be, yeah, like, I'm going to be doing dude perfect type shit and posting it. And people are going to be like, you're a fucking sellout loser, dude perfect. Not us, because PFT and I. And I'm going to be like, yeah, it is what it is. I'm a, I'm a purple hoser guy up and down. Through it's fun. Game. Like when you have, you know, when you got a basketball court, you got like a beam. Like you want to like, let me see if I can throw this ball off a wall and into the hoop. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's fun. Yeah. You get millions and millions and billions of views. No, dude perfect. Absolutely. YouTube stresses me out. I, I've been watching this show called Vlad and Nikki. Fly TV? No. It's these two little kids and they just like do random shit and they get like they're they're Russian. They live in Florida. They walk on bridges. It's for like kids stuff. It's like kids watch it. They're like playing kids games and stuff. Every single one of their videos is like 75 million views. It's crazy. It's It's just insane. Whatever you can put on to have on repeat while your kids just watch. We need to make kid programming. That's what we need to do. Kids YouTube is is insane. Have it's you seen insane. Them? My niece and nephews watch Miss Rachel. Have you seen her? No, I don't. Want Though, to get that. That those are t- terrible. Two like they're two hundred million views. Yeah, we need to yeah. get it. We hey, is, it, is that that's what, the future? We got to get kids program because we have the space now. Let's fucking make a kids like let's make a kids YouTube and we'll just put on like what? Why? You just gotta have the bloopy voice. You yeah, wait, you, you wait. can do a tour of the office and be like. In the bloopy voice, like, wow, look at this basketball. It's orange. Yeah, and kids pass love me the that ball. Shit. Wow, that's a great pass, big cat. And you and all <laughs> all the hoops are ten feet tall. And now they've look- been playing basketball since James Naismith <laughs> came around in a peach basket. Now look at this. It's a small white ball. Not yeah. like a big orange basketball. What do you think we do with this? Oh well you hit it with a stick. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that's seriously it. That's it. Yeah, it's fucking it. billionaires now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're gonna be doing that stuff. Office reveal drops Monday. Uh, but yeah, I, I was wrong. We should definitely do kids videos. And in the middle of that, we'll be like, look at this, look at this brown ball. That's a football. Yeah. Throw it real far. Hey kids, you ever hear about Dak Prescott? He can't win the big one. (laughs) Hey, this is a brown ball. You throw it real far. And then when you play it and you get hit on the head, you see little Tweety birds, but you'll be fine. That's okay. It's just cobwebs. (laughs) Shake it off. Get back into the game. (laughs) Dude, we should do kids programming. Yeah. Hank, just figure it out. Make a little kid set. We'll fucking do the stupid voices. We'll put on stupid hats and we'll go yeah. mega viral. Hey, kids, guess a number. <laughs> oh, you got it before Hank. <laughs> oh, 69. Why does Billy always guess that? Oh. It's because when, uh, when mommy and daddy love each other very much, they put their mouths on each other's <laughs> privates. When mommy puts her, <laughs> when daddy puts her D in mommy's M. And we're still waiting for that Taylor Swift video. You think we're ever going to see her milkers? <laughs> That's where milk comes from. <laughs> we could do this, dude. We could easily do this. Yeah, I'm sold. I'm okay. sold. All right. We're done. We're done. I'll fucking, we can test it with my kids. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll do anything. I'll do anything for millions clicks? of dollars. For yes. clicks? And we just subtly put in part of my take stuff? Mm-hmm. 
and we just get all these young listeners. I'm in. All right. The Chargers are frauds. <laughs> They'll never win a big game. When daddy gets mad, it's because he lost his 16-team parlay. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should do a bet- betting series. <laughs> daddy really needed Deontay Johnson to score a touchdown. <laughs> what does over-under mean? Well, you'll root for the points. <laughs> All right. <laughs> PFT, your fire fest. Uh, my fire fest is we were playing basketball out on the court. This was in between the Miss Gomez interview mm-hmm. and the, the live stream. We were playing some three-on-three out there, and uh, it was myself, Max, Memes, who's sneaky good at basketball. You never know it from how he's he runs sneaky around. sneaky good at everything, he except is. being nice to people. He is very bad at that. <laughs> that one he sucks at. He's great at being mean to people. <laughs> um, and Shane was playing, Evan was playing Pug. Yep. Pug. 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 Our YouTube guy. Pug. Evan was playing. There was a loose ball. A scramble ensued for it. And Pug is built like a fire hydrant. He's Pug. He's Pug. Yeah, he's Pug. Pug. And uh, I was going for it. He was going for it. He put his shoulder, as my hands were up in the air, he put his shoulder like right into my ribs, and I instantly heard and felt something pop when he did it. Oh, no. And now it hurts to breathe. It hurts to move. It hurts to laugh. It hurts to do anything. hurts to sit. hurts to stand up. I have broken ribs before. I don't know if this is a broken rib or if it's like displaced cartilage, but he fucked something up inside my chest, and it hurts real bad. And it's day one of playing basketball on our court. Yeah. And of course, somebody, be injuries. somebody has to get nicked up a little bit. Yeah. And then, um, I there, told, yeah, I mean, someone was going to get hurt first. And yeah, I told Clinton Portis about it. He was like, I can rearrange your ribs. And I was like, I don't oh, think that sounds. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think that rearrange your guts. Uh, I was like, I don't think that's a thing <laughs> that you can do. He's like, no, seriously, just like lay down on the ground. So I laid down on my chest and then he just put his arms on my, on the uh, upper back and just pushed down. And just fucked me up. And I think he fucked me up worse. <laughs> of course. Yeah. The sound that you made, I was in the kitchen. It hurt it so sounded bad. sounded like someone died. Yeah, because it, it, like, I'm in. Like, I had to run in. I'm in actual it pain. It was like a run in, what's what's that scream sound? Not I, like a. Uh. I'm in pain right now. And with Clinton Portis, who is a big dude, pressing down, that, he rearranged my ribs, for sure. Yeah. And not in a good way. No. Um, so, yeah, my fire fest is that I have a rib injury from Pug playing three on three basketball. Happens. Happens. Yep. Um, okay, my fire fest is, so I'm a little bit of a creature of a ha- of habit. Uh, Tuesday night I went to sleep. Not early, but whatever. Regular time after matching and everything. Uh, Wednesday I woke up and I have this one podcast that I love to listen to every Wednesday morning. It's called Pardon My Take. Mm-hmm. And I went to my phone to see if it was up. It comes out on Wednesday mornings. It comes out on Wednesdays. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for seven plus years. And I went to look for it. And it wasn't there. What happened? Uh, nothing. I actually did not is, do an episode. This is Ghost Big Cat. I killed myself on spot. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. No, that. Yeah, it was so confusing. It's it cost like, us a listener. These guys literally do the show every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They've been the most consistent part of my life. Every single morning, they're in my phone. Uh, they're there for me. It's a it's it's the trust relationship that's been built up years over years over years. I know they're working late just so that they can record a show and I can wake up and listen to it. And then everything changed. It wasn't there. That's, and my trust is completely gone. And I don't know if I'll ever listen to it again. That's a really bad thing that happened to you. Yeah. That's like Firefest of the century. Yeah. Why so, do you think they didn't get it up? I don't know. I have no idea. Because uh, my understanding is... If you're publishing a podcast, mm-hmm. you edit the show, mm-hmm. and then the show's done, mm-hmm. and then you have a button that you press mm-hmm. to upload the show mm-hmm. to the world. But what happens if you forget to press a button? Well, I guess the show wouldn't go up then. Yeah, so maybe maybe someone was broken. Yeah, oh, yeah, maybe there's an emergency. I uh, hope not. Well, no, okay, you know what? So these guys that I listen to call part of my take, they do uh, put in a lot of hours, and they sometimes record really, really late. So it could have been a situation where. The producers, it was like so late that the podcast didn't come out till later. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they could have been just recording really late that night. I've heard of that podcast, part of my take. And one thing that's great about it, because like you know, they've got like some funny guys that are like always around jumping mm-hmm. in when their teams are good or bad sometimes, mm-hmm. but they never forget what their job is, mm-hmm. and that's to press the button. Are you sure we're talking about can the same podcast? Can we just do it? Can we just can we just Wait, whoa, can we just whoa, get to this? Whoa, whoa, can we like whoa. this has been the longest intro in the history of fucking intros. <laughs> Max, we'll wait wait for your fire fest, bro. Yeah. I'm okay. doing mine. Okay? So yeah, uh they must have <laughs> they mu- they must have recorded late, but then I saw one of the guys, Big Cat said they recorded at 4 p.m. 
So that's so that's plenty. like how long does it take? Does it take that's like eight it hours to press hours? the button? Sometimes it can take twelve hours to press the button. Yeah. So I I still don't know what happened. I don't have an answer for it, and I'm I'm never gonna listen to him again. Probably listen to like Bill Simmons or you know Pat mm-hmm. McAfee. One of the all it takes is out. one day of not being there for the people. And then maybe they became Daddy Gang. Yeah. Father Cooper got a couple new followers. Mm-hmm. All right, that's our show. Max. Yeah, it was a good show. So, wh- is it going to go was out? Your fire fest, Max. Uh, I was the one who did not press what? the publish button. You no. of, of your favorite podcast? Yes, no. that was me. How could you? You, the guy that everyone loves? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So what happened, Max? Well, to it be fair real- to Max, he when he was planning ahead. He probably thought the Phillies were going to be in the World yeah. Series that night, so he didn't have it scheduled. To He's like, press "We'll probably clinch. We'll probably sweep." Yeah, yeah. We finished the show early. I finished. I finished doing my work early. For people who don't know, there's a whole process of putting in the back end. You gotta. I know. Put in all no, that. Don't, don't I know about this. putting all the grass. Don't make this sound. What's the process? The pro- Dude, what's all, sound what's like the it's... process of, of sticking it in the back end? Well, you put it in the back end, and then you <laughs> yeah. have to. You have you to have upload to, the does the back end ever ask? Is it and in? And then you have to put in the timestamps, and then you have to go in, and then you have to input where the ads are. Mm-hmm. And I did. Then you got to reach after it's in the back end. You got to reach around and just mm-hmm. press the button. Mm-hmm. No, I, I did. You got to make sure you got to pull it out of the back end too. I don't know what happened. Don't I, go into the front end after it's in the back end, though. I I. Get infection. I just, I did every, I did every step. Well, no, 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 no. Except <laughs> the most important for step. the step that lets everybody listen to the show. So and you just what w- I normally do? Yeah, I normally do it but, right late at night, and I put it out, and then I uh, it takes a, like once you press publish, it takes like probably 15, 20 minutes before it actually gets out to the platforms. So normally what I what I do is I press publish and then I keep and then I keep looking and I keep keep refreshing keep refreshing uh-huh. and then I look on I look on Apple I'm like all right it's up I'll I'll do the tweet now from the main account being all right podcast is live finish the show early didn't didn't do the whole refresh thing because I <clears throat> Wait no you never hit the button no yeah <clears throat> this is this is really sad yeah, no, the, like that's. I, it's but you did the tweet. But you did the tweet. But you didn't, yes, tweet, but you didn't I press for, the button. So I forgot to do the tweet. So I, it was one of those things where I went to bed. Wait, no, 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 you forgot to press the. button. Well, I forgot to press the button. I thought I pressed the button, but I went to bed, and it was one of those things where it's like half. Of I was half's not bad. I was falling. I, I was falling asleep, and then I was like, oh fuck. I forgot to do the tweet. Okay, so the so tweet right, is not the yeah, most important part. Yeah, would you rather part. have the tweet or no, the, the most important? I said the I forgot button. to do the most important part, not the tweet. Like, not the... Well, I forgot you to woke publish up, the button. You woke up and you're like, damn, I forgot to tweet it. No, I didn't wake up. I was like in bed and then I thought to myself, I was like, oh, fuck, I forgot. I forgot to, to tweet it. it, but never was like, but oh, then fuck, I, I But then I didn't, button. I didn't... What I normally do is check to make sure it's up. I it it was so long I just I just did it and I and I that was like the first time that I haven't checked to make sure it, it, it wasn't on Apple and the first time that I've ever thought that I pressed publish and didn't press publish How, so it was a double whammy of first times I've ever done that and can you can because you, you, can, you can walk me through the next morning can you walk me through like yeah. eight hours later yeah how to oh, feel the next morning super bad like, did you wake what up time to, did you wake did you up? up to an alarm I woke up to an, I woke up to an alarm. At because I eight thirty. Because so that was already two hours after we had. Because I woke up at six thirty, and n- saw that it wasn't up. Wrong. You called me at. You called me at six fifty eight. Yeah. So I woke up at six thirty. Saw that it wasn't up. Okay. When brushed my teeth, was like, oh, maybe it's still loading, or I'm missing it, or something. And then I realized, no, this is a problem. Yep. Called you. No pickup. No pickup. Called memes. Memes. Memes is the king. What memes would we have the done? King. It would have just gone up an hour later. It was, uh, yeah. That's why it's player of the week. Memes is player of the week. I saw the call. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> but it had to have felt like a little bit good that it was my fuck up and not yours. It was just. Yeah, Memes is yeah. shocked. Like, what do you yeah. mean it's not on? And, my- then he, and then he looked at you and goes, oh, yeah, you didn't press the button. <laughs> <laughs> like, Memes went on, saw, saw in the back end that everything else that needed to be done was done. I just, I just the button. Should we get the button? 
Should we what get access mean? to the button in case this happens again? You have access to the button. Do I can hit the button? the button. I could hit yeah. the button. Yeah, I think you have access. No yeah. chance. Yeah, I could, you yeah. could give me an hour, and I like uh, <laughs> I would never be able to figure out where the button. No, is. No, no, no. You, but I it, could hypothetically. You could. I could figure out how to get the button. Do we need to you put you guys call, on? Like, should there you, be a buddy you system be able to, for the button? You, in theory, like, no. Like I think this this will never happen. Like oh, the chances this will never happen again. This will never happen again. Wait, you were about to say the chances of it happening again. The chances that it happened once was like. A fucking well, astronomical high. not high well yeah it happened but it that doesn't mean that going into it that the chances were high i mean it was better than one percent how many of these how many how long you've been how many episodes like 70 no less than one percent well uh, you've done 70 episodes 52 52 weeks in a like year at least over a year three episodes a week yeah, less than one percent. So like how many 200. have you done? He's probably done. Oh, he's been here for a year. He's probably and done a half. Two hundred ten episodes. Times yeah. So half. Oh like yeah, a half three a times percent. fifty-two. I'm doing my math wrong. Half a percent. It's more than zero. No, I didn't say zero. I said it was low, low percentage. Mm -hmm. All right. So what are we gonna do to make sure this never happens again? I like I have a system that, so that this shouldn't happen. Like I have the system. Oh, the system no, broke. No. Yeah. The system is no. broken. The system broke, but the, the system, the system will not break again. Like and I, what happens system, if it does? That's my, what they said in Chernobyl. Yeah, my system, is, my system is that I check before I do the. I, I don't know why. I, I will <laughs> never tweet the tweet without seeing seeing it's up on on Apple. Max, and Spotify. I, I think I think I, I won't. I, that's the I don't think system. I don't think that's the, the system simple, works. It, it no, that no, is how the need, system works. We need a process, but I, not that a is the process and the system. I broke my system, and, but, and, but that is my system. Yeah, and that. So you, the system's not going to fail, but you might fail your system. I think right. I found a flaw in the system. Like, it's crazy that all the, like, I have never posted, done the tweet without making sure it's up on Apple, and I've okay. never th not posted the show thinking that I posted the show. I've never murdered a person. It yeah. was this one time. Yeah. Like, Am I a murderer? On 99.9% .9 of the nights O.J. Simpson went to sleep, he did not commit a Correct. crime. Correct. You don't know that. That's not true. He went to, he went to jail for something else. Yeah, ninety nine point nine. He's he been to, on Earth. He went to jail time. for stealing his own memorabilia. Yeah, that's not really. Let's get crime. his Heisman. Is that not? Did he go to jail for he was it? He's emancipating his Heisman. Did he go to jail for it? Crime. Yeah, but that's that's a that's still ninety nine point nine. That's a whole nother. All right, so he's law, justice I have a fact or fiction for Max. Um, fact or fiction, Max. When you had a soul patch, you actually were a thousand percent. You were. You did not miss hitting that's the button ever. That's a fact. Because I think I found the flaw in the system. <laughs> he doesn't want to, He literally would maybe quit before we, he gets a soul patch. You never, <laughs> you never miss publishing the podcast the when you had a soul patch. Okay. Like All right. Here's, here's, here's a fair deal. Ready? Max, if this ever happens again, you have to have a soul patch for two straight years. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great carrot right in front yeah. of you. And you can't quit. You can't quit. I. You can't quit. I, I. If you forget to hit the button ever again, it's soul patch for two straight years. Question. Yes. Sometimes there's problems with the back end. We're I talking can about understand the button. that. This is yes. Button. Yes. Button specific. If, if there's questions with the back end, you'd be like, hey, guys, there's, there's problems yeah, with the back end. Yeah, you'll let us know. Like, yeah, you'd let us know. Like, hey, it's not. There's the publishing. Guy. We know what normal, like sometimes, oh, like Amazon Music or Google Play doesn't have it. We get that. This was just very clearly the button wasn't pushed. If you don't push the button, it's soul patch for two years and you can't quit. I don't. This wait, isn't we, really a negotiation. Yeah, no, by yeah, the way. deal. We could also give him a deal, which is a soul patch until a Philadelphia team wins a four major sport. So you, it could be way shorter than two years. No, because I want to give him. I want to. I want to make sure. I don't really want to punish Max. Max does a great job. I don't. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to punish Max <laughs> severely right now. I want to put in an extra system on top of his system that incentivizes him to never break his original system. We're talking about Max 2.0. The Max 2.0. If we hit that point, Max 1.0 will cease to exist. So Max 1.0 has to make sure that Max 1.0 stays alive by hitting the goddamn button. Deal. Yeah. Deal. Okay. I think that's fair. Like, there's no way Max will not hit the button if he has to have a soul patch for two years, mm -hmm. and he yeah. can't quit. That is a very part, a big part of the stipulation because I think actually with the soul patch for two years, you might try to quit.
I wouldn't let you. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't let you. He also. And you have to shave it like every day. He also could. You have to keep it clean shaven he every day. could quit though. No, he can't quit. He legally what, can't what quit. What happens if he I just quit? said he can't quit. What happens we'll if We'll offer tries? him so much money that he'd be an insane person to quit. Would it be worth like, Max, if we if we paid you like five <laughs> sure five hundred thousand dollars a year, but you have to have a soul patch, would you do it? Oh, maybe we just get the soul patch for just some cash? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. I Max, I think I this is fair. You Yeah, you no, can't. this is fair. This I, is fair. what I tell you, when you texted me, you were very apologetic. It, it, won't, it won't happen again. I said, it I won't said, happen again. I understand. So and like obviously this part of it is like it happened. Part of the reason why like it's okay is or it's not okay. But us giving you shit means that you're not actually in trouble. If it ha and I said to you right away on on Wednesday morning, I was like, "It's okay if it ever happens again. It's a problem." Yeah, no, because I, I think yeah. that is fair. Like yes. one mistake, everyone gets a mistake. Mm -hmm. If it ever happens again, then we have Soul Patch City. Yes. And now I'm rooting for it to never get pus pushed. <laughs> I would be willing to trade one <laughs> episode worth of downloads for Max with a Soul Patch for two years. I am now like. This is strictly, it will be the happiest day of my life if I wake up and they're like, where's is, the podcast? It is this exact situation. It yeah. is this exact no, you got, situation. Not pushing the button. Not not pushing the pu not pushing the publish button. Correct. Okay. And not I saying also anything. would like to see like you can't it can't wake up with no like the the podcast isn't there and you haven't alerted us as to why. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I also yeah. I also do want to do one of Big Tone's ideas. I think next week, uh I don't know what the schedule is, but I would like a Celtics minute from you. Okay, uh, that's fine. On every episode next week. I like that. Talking about... On every episode? Okay. Yeah, next week. But you okay, have to talk fine. about how good they are. Yeah, you have to Bruce say how Celtics good they haven't are. Lost. I, I, trust me, I can, get in, I can get in the Celtics yeah, mode. Yeah, that's we, true. We, Max is very we, funny we, when he goes... We've seen Celtics mode. <laughs> I actually love that character of yours. All right, I think it's fair. Yeah. You're no. not in trouble, but big trouble's on the horizon. No, yeah, that would... That, ha that yes, yes. I mean, it'll never happen again, so it's not a problem. But if it did, but if it did, that would that would ruin my life. I, my, <laughs> my girlfriend would probably break up with me. My family wouldn't want would want I wouldn't get invited to any weddings. I wouldn't be in any wedding pictures. It would that would ruin. I mean, that would legitimately. It'd be like I would go into. A, I, like I think I would legitimately go into like a de, like a depression. <laughs> like I would. No pictures make, would be taken of you ever. <laughs> you'd make us laugh. The one thing that it might do would it would probably force me into sick shape. Yeah, yeah. Like I would but probably not. No, no, no. It would. If I it it would because that the soul patch isn't the the biggest it is it's your it's, it's your it, it's your neck you may, it may as well be a clean shaven yeah. face yeah it's the, yeah. it's the yeah all right so hopefully we never get to that point and I'm sorry to all the listeners that Max didn't push the button you want to say sorry to my friend Brian Max I'm sorry Brian you sorry ruined his I'm honeymoon so, I'm, I woke like I have like I I just started calling memes and just like talk and just, I called him twice and I was just like. I just I just need you to talk to me. Why did you think that the the hammer was gonna come down harder? No, well, it wasn't even that. Like I even when I got your response, I knew that it, like it was more so like I just I don't like fucking up. Yeah, no, I, I know that that's, why, that's why that's why I did I did not if I if you were a guy who like fucks up all the time and fuck fuck ups were part of your like mo, I would treat it very differently. You're not. You actually are very very. I trust you so much and um. Now we just have a soul patch just looming over our heads at all time. Just got to press the button. He called me. I was at the gym. and uh, Oh, sick nice, brag. Nice <laughs> and we, I think we just sat on First silence. First thing memes have said yeah. in all week. <laughs> I was at the gym. <laughs> and we just sat in silence for like two minutes. Matt, uh, memes. Yes. Look at. I want to see you real quick. Stand up. Okay. If the button doesn't get pressed, uh, you have to shave your head for a year. Okay. I like so it. now you guys are in it together. All right. You're in it together. Memes, was there like a small part of you that was like, yeah, Max fucked up? Nope. Because I, think I, was. Was I was dealing with the problem at some memes people. No, but you were saving the day. Some people no. were saying. Memes was saving. Like, some they, people were saying memes might have drugged Max oh. because the YouTube views probably went crazy because the YouTube was up. Sabotage the button. It was up, but like my neighbors know all your names now. I was motherfucking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I deserve that. Shout out memes. Yeah, shout out memes. Me Player like, of the week. Player of the week. Player of the week. And shout out me for being up. Yeah. Yeah. True. Shout out you. Shout out you. For being up. For being up.
But uh, yeah, okay. I think this is a fair way to deal with it. No, no immediate immediate punishment. I'm sorry. Well, that everyone I gets one you fuck up. Memes. I'm not a. Uh, well, no. That this is this is the protocol is better this way when you have a buddy system. Memes will not let this happen either. Shave, right. Shaves head for two years. Some job security. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Meme. No memes. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're helping negotiate. No, no memes. No, no. If the button doesn't get pushed, you lose your job. Oh. No, I'm no, 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 I'm fucking with you. All right. Uh, John, no, but I do like the... Like, I do want a him. 10 year no sh shit. He has to have no hair for two... He, I, I want him in this with me. Okay, so two years, no no hair for memes uh, and soul patch for Max. The button will get pushed. We let everyone know the button will always get pushed from here on out. Are you a little nervous for tonight? No, tonight, I mean... You're going to jam that button. I mean, I... Who knows? That's I'd be a little long, nervous. Forever tonight. is a long time. What, forever. If so, what if someone knocks you out with a frying pan? Like, like yeah, but, what, yeah. What if there's like Wiley Coyote comes and just knocks you out with a frying? What pan? if there's like a? What if I get into like a car accident or something? Well, we can talk about that. You should actually maybe get like a button in your in like a life alert. I'm thinking that's the podcast button. So if you like are about to die, you can still publish the podcast. Or if I woke up and realized that it wasn't published, just go get into a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What if you? What if in the middle of the night you sleepwalk into the other room and you? Accidentally unpress, unpush the button. The button. Oh yeah. no, that's that could have happened. That could have happened. You can unpush it. No, I. Uh, you can you unpush. It. Is you there can a move it to draft? There's a second button. No, you you can publish it and then you can move it to drafts. It was in. It was saved to drafts. So when I we woke up. So Hank, could I move it to drafts? This the. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to just take a picture of every time. Yeah, I so that, that activity oh, yeah. is tracked, but <laughs> is, I would oh, not fuck okay. with it. I want the podcast now. This is all just a, we, we have a system. The podcast will be out. I, I think that might be my new system. I think I'm going to take a video of myself pressing the button every time. <laughs> Since just group for chat? not. No, just the, just just to so have, you have the data. Just yeah. So I have yeah. the data in okay. case. I like that. I like that. All right. I five years. Five years of soul patch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either way. We love you, Max. It's one fuck up. Don't beat yourself up. You've uh, you know. We and you knew that we were gonna we were gonna bust your balls because that's yeah no I that know. means that it's not any real fuck up we would not have busted your balls we would have been like you're in actual trouble yeah busting no. balls is the fast way back yeah, uh, yeah okay numbers great show boys eight twenty seventeen mm, that's a good number thirty one three thirty one for Hank Hank have you ever gotten this Evan twenty two Shane ten have you almost come close to got it. What's your number, Hank? 31. What's yours? I took eight. Memes, you're three. Max is 20. Shane, 10. Evan, 22. 77. He thought it was 17 for a second. 77. Love you guys. All right, see everyone Monday. I love that this lottery ball machine is now like dominating Hank. Even though none so of us quickly. have gotten it. So quickly. <laughs> but Hank was so mad at the lottery machine that time. <laughs> Love you guys. Job security. Oh.